This version of It's Eric Nagel has been modified from its original broadcast. Content has been edited to fit this platform. It's Eric Nagel. And it starts now. Ladies and gentlemen of the universe, universe. the next voice you hear, it's Eric Nagel. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of... Uh, well, you can check the, uh, the the cold intro at the beginning of the show if you, you missed all of that. Uh, welcome to the show. Eric Nagel here. Over there is the lovely and talented Zia. Hi. I have lovely and talented shorts on today as well. I'm very proud of you. What kind of shorts are those? They're Star Wars shorts for people who aren't watching and or can't see. They're Star Wars comic shorts. I also got them from Black Milk. I emailed Black Milk. I'm going to make them give me stuff. That's uh, that's pretty much what I was asking for, which company it was. We're trying to get Black Milk, which is a uh, clothing company out of Australia, to uh, that uh, Zia seems to be pretty uh, fanatical about. I trying love to it. Trying to get them to send her free stuff so she can wear on her streams and, and the chippa and all that fun stuff. And then uh, also equally lovely and talented is Gittles right down there. Oh. What are you wearing Hello? today? I'm wearing a champion hoodie that I bought uh, four years ago at a Models that was closing out of uh, going out of business for $10 <laughs> because I was That's, cold. What's the Models? A uh, Models is a sporting goods store that uh, doesn't really sell much of sporting goods anymore or really anything. Exist. They, they don't exist in most places. They don't exist anymore. Like they kind of all went out of business. Yeah, it was yeah, a big sporting goods it. store here on the uh, on the northeast. I think they aren't they out of Ohio. Don't they own the Cleveland Browns or something? Ugh, Ohio no. is for lovers. <laughs> that is the Germans from the uh, Simpsons who bought the the power plant. They had enough money to buy the Cleveland Browns. All right, I don't know. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How do you not? Know I was gonna that? say what? <laughs> I was I was thinking for a second. The episode where the Germans buy the power plant and Homer goes to the land of chocolate. I Are forgot. You telling me? I forgot. Oh, the man. land of the land of chocolate was fifty go percent off. See ya. Yeah, <laughs> I'm slipping in my age here. Yeah. Oh my god. The land of chocolate was fifty percent off, and then they bought the power plant, and they still had enough to buy the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, welcome. What are you to the, wearing, Eric? Uh, I am wearing a. Uh, T-shirt for another radio show, and uh, my ah. usual one of my many Adidas hoodies. Oh, nice! Your corn hoodie. All right. Uh, anyway, social media <laughs> across the board. It's Eric Nagel. Follow us there. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We can find all the video versions, uh, the video archives of our uh, the radio show, all up there for you to enjoy. And if you want to be part of the show, six five one Smithers six five one seven six four eight four three seven. So it's been another week. Lady and gentlemen, how is everybody doing? Who wants to start? I mean, I wish I could say that exciting things are happening in my life, but they really aren't. Although right. one exciting thing was on my stream, I made a chipizza, as Didlotic has so kindly coined it. Uh, a, a pizza? pizza? With a, a potato chip pizza. Okay. Nice. I thought it's you were a, really just cashing in more into your obsession with Chip Chippers and <laughs> that you were starting to name things after him. No, I swear to God, it's a it's a it's it's a recipe that has potato chips on the pizza, and then we came into it, and Didlotic was like a chip pizza, and I was like, I love that so much, just because chip and pizza, putting the words together, chips, potato chips, it was good, is basically what I'm saying. So that was kind of the highlight of my week. All right. I saw actually a video the other day. Uh, there's a, a guy I follow who does has a YouTube channel. His name is Chef John from Food Wishes. That's where I got the more- recipe from. Foodwishes.com. Yeah, and he talks like this. <laughs> yes, he's, he's crazy. In a weird cadence. He sounds like an like, animatronic like, human being. Like he kind of yeah, yeah, like he like it's just really funny and endearing. He's actually a really good cook and he has great recipes. Yeah. But like and he's really funny with like stupid cheesy puns, but uh amazing. yeah, he made His a, puns are he amazing. made a tweet the other day that just said how high am I that I'm going to try and attempt to make a potato chip pizza and then like two, two hours later just said dot dot dot. Well, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my awesome. god! I'm glad that you made it. Yeah, it's legitimately really good, and I love when he signs off. He always goes, and as always, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, and it's always like out of tune and kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's great. He's fantastic. Well, yeah. there you go. I made that pizza. That I was bet exciting. you. Was I delicious. bet you he's one of those guys where what, what did it, what was the ending thing there? As of always, enjoy. Is that was his thing, mm-hmm. right? And always, always enjoy. And then they're like, all right, cut. And he just goes. And then he's ready to kill. <laughs> like he's just a miserable, psychotic person. He just knows how to perform for the camera. 
He's just really good. Yeah. No, he doesn't show himself on camera. He never That's the thing. Yeah, he right. just, and just you don't just see him, the bodies, the victims, nothing. Nope. Yeah, nope. Those are all under the house. That's where he buries. Of course, he does I don't the know. videos oh, okay. that you'd want to see on Food Network. Just someone making a recipe. No, sh- no, st- no real crazy stories. Not like I got this because my grandma's great grandmother died from eating these one kind of beans, so we found a way to make them so you won't die. And then it's like just get to the fucking recipe. And then they're you like, mean- okay, there's no beans in this recipe. Uh, it's just actually a pizza. Like, you Fuck. mean? You mean like those blogs that you read when you're just trying to find the recipe and it's oh fucking eight God. paragraphs of them telling some story about how they and I'm just like, shut the fuck up and give me the recipe. Right. I can't stand it. Like, I just can't stand it. Like, because you, you either have the recipe book where it's literally just the recipe and you're like, OK, now what do I do? Here's all the ingredients. Or you have the other one where it's like a novel before you even get to the ingredients. Yeah. And then they're like, well, tune in next week for part two of the blog and we'll actually give you the recipe after we finish up about how grandma escaped the Great Depression. You're like, I don't give a <laughs> shit about this fucking story. Just tell me how to make squash <laughs> pie. Grandma That's smuggled this know. recipe away from the Kaiser. And now Wait. it's bringing it to you. But first, let me tell you about HelloFresh. And you're like, what yeah. the fuck? Come on, <laughs> get to it. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's such a nightmare. Oh, don't God. go to cooking with uh, my diffi- I don't have those difficulties with the cooking stuff. Mine is more when you're, when you're cooking or attempting new stuff on the grill or, or smoking for barbecue, you kind of really need to research your stuff because you could really screw mm-hmm. up a very expensive piece of meat like that. But when you go and you look up certain things nobody can agree on the time or the temperature for cooking the same thing i'll see six different recipes articles whatever and they're like keep it on low heat and tin foil on the top shelf in the back of the grill or whatever and this thing goes no you need to use direct heat for 400 degrees and this is right here in front and you keep spraying it with olive oil it's like just somebody tell me what to do here i'll do the seasoning just tell me how to cook the meat so i don't ruin it well you know what it is i think the issue is that uh, there's lots of different techniques for barbecue across the country. Like, like every, every region has its own kind of barbecue. And then I'm sure that everyone is not telling you 100% how to make it because it's their chef secret. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, no one can beat make barbecue as good as Billy Joe Bob down the street there. And he's like, uh huh, it's my family <laughs> recipe. And he'll he'll give you wrong ingredients. He'll give you wrong instructions. I've talked to people <laughs> who've uh, published cookbooks who are like they purposefully leave out shit. So that way, like you, it'll always be better at the restaurant, and it won't be as good as home, but it'll be close. And by the way, Billy Bob down the street makes great <laughs> barbecue beans. You know what the secret ingredient is? Is it Billy Bob? It's Grandma. Oh, I well, thought it was the blood of Billy Bob. Yeah, but he can only. Well, I guess eat- we're not going to know why. Uh, you know, her, from page two of the blog post, why Grandma never made it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, unfortunately, that is a story that will never have a, a, a be wrapped up with a conclusion. But, but Eric, why are you buying expensive cuts of meat to smoke? You're supposed to get like chuck roast and like shit that like takes a long time and breaks down. And uh, I mean, it depends. Like, if buying, like, it depends um, um, if you're doing like beef ribs. Sometimes beef ribs can be a little pricey. It's compared well, to like the are expensive. compared to the pork ribs, you know, and beef ribs are something that you got to nurse all day. Like you got to get up. You got to, you know, I, I've seen the thing with the wood chips and the apple juice and all of that stuff to keep it going. And I don't mind the work to go with it as long as I know of a guideline till I get the feel of how it should be cooked and then once you have experience doing all that stuff you can pretty much by feeling an eyeball the recipe the cooking techniques however you want to do it yeah right in there that's the other thing with the chili eyeballs so Robert, right. go right through I'm reading in the chat by the way hello to everybody on Twitch who's watching the yeah, show live everyone Twitch how you doing uh, Funkora is saying that Zia has never barbecued is this correct no, <laughs> we were talking. It's funny we were talking about it. Someone had asked me if I barbecued in the summer in chat earlier, and I said no. Well, I mean, I haven't barbecued since I left Hawaii. That's basically what it's been. I haven't barbecued. There's what's, nowhere to barbecue in L.A. What's barbecuing? Yeah, where are you going to barbecue in L.A. over it over the dumpster fire that the other hobos are using? <laughs> burning <laughs> oil drums, <laughs> car fires, all of it. There's plenty of places. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's true. the barbecue like? What kind of barbecue do you do in Hawaii? Is it? I mean, everybody knows the pig roast with the coals in the beach and all that stuff. But what what's like authentic Hawaiian barbecue or Polynesian barbecue? I mean, yeah, it would pretty much just be an emu. But for the most part, when my family would barbecue, we just barbecue regular stuff. My uncle Calvin made the best barbecues, but it's all very like Asian flavor marinades. And he would like marinade chicken thighs. Nice. And it would always be like, yeah, like a soy sauce or like a sticky sweet. Like, like a teriyaki. Stuff like that. Yeah, kind of like teriyaki, different variations mm. on that. Always green onions. My Auntie Kelly made the best. Yeah, huli huli chicken, Phil. You can buy those on the side of the road. People would just 
they're just roasting on a spit. You can just stop and buy one for five bucks. We used to do that for dinner all the time. That sounds amazing. If you were driving through Hawaii, that's one of those places where if you just see the trucks (laughs) or somebody with a a makeshift pit on the side of the road, you would pull over there to eat that rather than go to a restaurant to find it. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Oh, yeah. No, it was the best. And it's like one of those things where it's like on literally on the side of the road on our way back home to Paradise Park, which is just like this little subdivision with some of the roads are paved and some aren't like one of those kind of places. And it would be we just drive home from work and, and the Huli Huli chicken guy is always there. And one day you're like, fuck it, I don't want to cook. And you just stop and grab a chicken and then get some potato salad and some rice and boom, fucking dinner. And there's so much good just like street food stuff like that that like you could only get in like certain things that like people don't really understand unless you're like from that region like for right people who don't get like in my area like where i live here there's empanada guys and you'll walk down the street and there's just guys with like backpacks and coolers and they're just like empanada 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 and you just stop them and get an empanada like it's pretty mm. weird but like you talk to people other words and they don't have empanada guys i'm like oh you don't have an empanada guy just walking down the street <laughs> selling empanadas they're like no we don't have that i'm like oh like that's just <laughs> you're like, well here. you're missing out yeah the same thing with hawaii too is a shave ice truck there's always oh, just a shave awesome. they always go they they fucking know they go when you're the, 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 I can't say words. The school that I went to. Is that like snow the, cone? Is that the shaved ice tr- truck? Is shaved ice, it? yeah. It's okay. similar to a snow cone, yeah. yeah. There's there's the elementary, I'm sorry, not the elementary school, the intermediate school that I went to right across the street from the high school and the shave ice, tr- shave ice trucks would just pull up and park outside of the schools when the kids were getting out. So everybody would go line up and get shave ice and then same thing, they go down to the beach on the weekends. Even during the weekdays, there's always a shave ice truck, always. Does Amazing. the shave ice truck have its own jingle or, or repetitive music like the ice cream man? I actually don't remember. Isn't that fucking weird? I grew up with them and I don't remember ever hearing music really. All right, maybe they don't. Was- if you don't remember, then then they didn't have it. But it's at like least on the- shave ice, they just throw ice balls at people. Like, oh, the guy's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like a snowball in hell is the name of the truck, and you're like they're just throwing snowballs at people in 90 degree Hawaiian weather. Here on the East Coast, you'd have these like good humor trucks or the uh, Mister Softy truck, any kind of combination like that. But they would drive around and they were playing this this dumb jingle music over and over, like na 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 na, and it would just repeat. You could hear it through your whole neighborhood. When it started getting louder, you knew it was on your street or about to come on your street. It's coming. So you'd run out there to buy, you know, like a bomb pop or rocket pop, wherever you are, how you call it. You can get the the big foot, pink foot with the gumball toe or uh, the, the Flintstone push up pops, which were good. And then also you could buy baseball cards, candy and weed. Yeah, and the uh, illegal and fireworks. I remember I would always buy illegal fireworks to the guy who'd come around. He get like, smoke bombs, like the the bang snap things. What were the dra- the ash they dragon have, like, things? The, yeah, they would have the uh, yeah the ashes that you light. They would have the uh, like the black dragon ones that you like light the packs and throw them like that you could put under like a uh, like a pot. And really, like, sound like a gun is going off. Yeah, the ice cream man was great. Yeah. Um, My first experience with an ice cream man was so fucking exciting. Because in Hawaii, we have the shave ice trucks, but they just go to the beach. Was he loving and gentle? (laughs) That was a good one. (laughs) She's not answering the question, folks. (laughs) Loving, no. Gentle, yes. Um, No, it uh, it was because in Hawaii, we have the shave ice trucks, but they don't go around neighborhoods. They just go out front in front of at the beach or in front of the schools. And that's it. When we first when we came to visit my dad in L.A., we went to go visit him because my dad moved to L.A. when my sister and I were pretty young and we were living with our aunt for a few years. And we went to go visit him in L.A. and they had ice cream trucks there and it was coming down the street. My dad's like, you guys, there's an ice cream truck out there. Like, don't forget the ice cream truck. And we're like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, it's a truck that drives around neighborhoods and you can buy ice cream. And we were like, what? We both ran out, no fucking shoes on our feet, didn't bother putting slippers on, absolutely nothing, chasing the ice cream street, ice cream truck down the street, fucking. We were so excited. It was amazing. I'm pretty sure we both bought like two or three fucking yeah. ice cream. And you would great. know, you would know the adults were in on it too when they, because they would always buy like the Choco Taco or something, not nothing elaborate like the kids Chip would get. Here. The what? I would o- always get chip witch. Like a chip witch. Chip but I'm- witch, and I would, I would go to like, I would go to one of the e- one of the following three: toasted almond, chocolate eclair, or strawberry shortcake. All good humor brand. I would go those, to those are not those are not necessarily what a kid would go for. Which you know, kudos to you for having a 
without having a, an expanded palette to want to go get that. That's not the stuff like a kid would run to get. They would get. Oh, man, that's what I wanted. They would get like the Flintstones push up pop. They would get something that looked like, you know, whatever popular cartoon character of the day. They would get um, Italian would ices bullshit, were like, my favorite. I would that go get those. That was just like bullshit Sherbert, though. Like nobody wanted Sherbert unless you're making like the Sherbert ginger ale like, type drink thing. Without what if you were saying it? yes to someone named Bert and you're like, Sherbert. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, that may have to be the episode title. It's so sure, dumb. Bert, and then Bert Kreischer pops up. He's like, "Not me." <laughs> um, That'd be a good bit. No, that would be saying- a great podcast with him, where you just agree to everything he does sarcastically. Sure, Bert. It's over in five minutes. <laughs> Um, no, so you Go knew the you. you knew the adults. They would get something a little bit more sophisticated, and then. Every truck in every area had the one item that they don't actually sell. So if you ask for that item, it means you're looking to obtain other uh, substances. So you would, just like Dairy Barn, which I don't think you're familiar with, but on Long Island and in the Northeast, they had these things called Dairy Barn, which was essentially supposed to be like a drive through supermarket. You would drive kind of, you would drive in and you would get glass jugs of milk or orange juice and potato chips and soda and beer and all that stuff. But you always knew the one or two products they didn't carry. So you would say, oh, can I get uh, whatever? And then they'd go, oh yeah, sure. And they'd ring it up as chips or something. And then they'd come out with another bag and then they, and they had your drugs. What was that item from our ice cream, man, Eric? Uh, I don't know. I I don't know what it was. Hmm. Do I know? I don't think I know. But I know I know it was a thing. I, I saw people buying stuff. They would always have the little uh, the little baggies or the little brown bags with their ice cream. Oh, nice. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, the, but the other thing is, was they did sell fireworks. They did sell illegal fireworks. I bought so those they, all the they time. They would sell you anything that you wanted. That was like, literally, they didn't care. It was an They're ice cream man. basically the man like, with a trench coat. <laughs> it, that's basically what it. But the trench coat is a giant red truck with stickers on it to attract children. <laughs> yeah, he looks like <laughs> Styles from Teen Wolf, just driving the truck around. <laughs> There was this truck that I saw when I first moved to LA. It was in the parking lot of like a Ralph's or some shit. And it says, it says selling tacos, not guns. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like you're just you're selling what now? Not yeah. guns? And tacos is code word for guns. <laughs> that's yeah, what I was thinking. Exactly. I was like, yeah, that's not very obvious at all. Very sneaky taco truck. <laughs> yeah, let me get How many a tacos. Taco did you truck? like? I would like 387 of them. Can I get please. a semi automatic taco, please? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, looking yeah, at the uh, for uh, an AK forty sevens worth of tacos. <laughs> looking at the 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 chat here, uh, Blue Healer, our, our friend Healer from Kentucky, um, Mister Softy, or get the fuck out. Mister Softy was one of the staples up here, but you also had like Carvel and a few other things. But it was hard to find them just the Mr. Softy trucks because you didn't know it was like it was like mafia territory, like gang warfare. You didn't know which company had which uh, neighborhoods as part of their uh, their area, their 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 collective uh, agreement of where to sell because you never saw two ice cream trucks in the same neighborhood. Like well, they would, you have do you? Uh, well, Sort of. Okay. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this situation, but a, a person that we went to school with had an incident with the Mr. Softy Man. And the Mr. Softy Man was run out of town in my neighborhood. Like, because I lived on the other side of like a parkway from Eric. Right. So, like, Mr. Softy used to come around by me. And then one day he just stopped coming around. And basically, what happened was I'm not going to mention the person's name male or female? A uh, female. Okay. Uh, and it's not it's not what you think is going to happen. <clears throat> okay. But basically what happened was the Mr. Softy driver was an old man. He waved this person, this child who was a friend of ours, mutual friend of ours, in front of the truck saying it was clear and it wasn't clear and she got mowed down by a car. And so Mr. Softy was chased <clears throat> out of the neighborhood. And he was replaced by the red guy with the ba- backwards hat who would sell smoke bombs and just like whatever you could find in the. Wow, truck. I didn't know that she went to school with us. Yes, Were you know, they, was you she know okay? them very well, Eric. Ooh. They lived around the corner from me. Very large family. <laughs> Do me a favor. A kids. We'll cover. Send me just send me a message who the who the person was so I can know the yeah. story pretty well. I'll Maybe I yeah. do know this and I'm not remembering it, but I definitely yeah, want to know. Uh, but yeah, 
But yeah, but that's why we had no. Uh, All right. Well, that's that. That's a changing of the guard situation. Um, well, yeah, he he was violently changed. It was like, come back here again. We'll fucking kill you. Right. <laughs> um. Get out. I didn't know that. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Wow. Was this in front of her house? Yeah, it was like right around the corner from our house. But yeah, he like it was a big thing. And that's when. Like, Wait, I did. Wasn't she in a like in a cast and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, cause it was yeah. Was okay, I do remember that. And he waved her across, and like the parents are there watching, and it wasn't clear to go, and just boom, just got hit by a car. So it wasn't I where do... you thought that star was going. Like, oh yeah, we had an incident with Mister Softy and a girl in the neighborhood. Nope. Wow. Hit no. by a car. I forgot all about. I'm gonna, all right. I still talk to that family. I should go and ask. Hey, remember yeah. this? <laughs> Let me bring up old wounds. Um. Literally. Yeah. So you you don't normally see two trucks in the same area. You get one. The one that used to come by me was weird. It was like powder blue, had stickers of all the different ice creams all over it, and then it had like a little, like a little bus flap that would flip on the side. They would say slow. It wouldn't say yeah. stop because kids were running to the ice cream truck. It would say slow. So yeah. it's like try not to hit them that much as the kids are just <laughs> doing a free form run through the parks right to the ice cream truck. Um, what you can we... hit them, just not fast. Yeah. Just not that fast. Just not that fast. <laughs> they like to bruise the kids. They bounce. Or just, you get you know. run out of town. Yeah. Kids have kids have rubber fucking bones. That's, That's very true. That yeah, also the break. one thing about being a kid, you can injure yourself a lot without injuring yourself as much as you can when you're an adult. Oh Funkora. my god, I hit myself on shoes the other day. I was like, fucking A. I'm just <laughs> oh, die. No. Uh, Funkora, I got the WWF ice cream bar because it had a wrestling card with it. That's correct, which was... Uh, caked in melted chocolate yes they did they tried to bring that or cm punk when he was uh with the company about 10 years ago was trying to bring that back as a big thing and they just kept fighting it like for some reason they didn't want to bring this ice cream treat back of all the things wrestling does and puts out and all the garbage that they sell he wants the ice cream bars back in the stands and that was too big of an issue that was too much of a problem but yeah i forgot they they still sell them at the supermarket, though. They have the WWE bar. Yeah, they do. They it, it's a, bo- it's they not bodega with. Um, it's what, not the same. Yeah. It's not the same as it used to be. Um, I haven't tasted them, but I know people who have, and they said it doesn't taste exactly the same, and they're not as big as they used to be. It's like ice cream sandwiches. They used to be like this big, and now they're this big. But if you have to buy the jumbo version for twice the price to get it back to the size that it originally was, or but you, do you think just they like used four. <laughs> yeah, do you think they that they used to be that big, or is it just because our hands were this big? No, they, they were this big. <laughs> they were this big. Now they're called jumbos, and then you have to pay extra for that just to get the the size that you originally uh, had. I no, love they're not called jumbos. They're called trophies. Sandwiches. They're trophy sandwiches. Uh, seeing if anything else is in there. This guy's Mr. What Rock T- is talking about is actually a story I've seen on Vice because uh, Rock lives in a neighborhood of Brooklyn that has a lot of mafia control. And like right. the neighborhoods, like the ice cream trucks were run by the mob. And it was like, you do not come down this street. Yeah. You'll never come down. That's how street. it was on Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, shit. It was documentaries about it, like That's the ice awesome. cream wars and shit. And cause we get the cool man ones right here. It's like the walrus with like the big fangs on them and they park <laughs> on like every corner. Never seen that says, one, but that's interesting. Mr. Cool man on it. All right, so yeah, truth and advertising. Cool man. It's a cool man. So uh, Zia made a, a potato chip pizza. I guess that went well on your stream. Yeah, it was good. It actually came out like a good pizza. It was legitimately tasty. The crunches, the potato chips were crunchies, and then you got the there was pesto on it, a little cheddar, Ooh. a little mozzarella, a little olive oil. All in all, it was very tasty. A little onion. Noms. Yeah, no. it's basically just a, a, a pizza with chips on it. Very much noms. Uh, Giddles, how have you been? What was your week like? My week? Yeah. Uh, what's a week anymore, dude? I have no idea. Uh, my week's been okay. Uh, the weather was kind of nice for a couple of days, so I went out, uh, got some walks in. I uh, I actually went out the other day and got food at a restaurant for the first time since like last March, and that was pretty good. I got some fried chicken and some sides. And then, uh, yeah, it's been pretty chill. Like, not too much else really going on. Playing uh, a somebody... bunch of Warcraft, playing a bunch of Sea of Thieves. Right. Uh, first off, a... what is Nick yelling at? I hear him in the background. He's playing He's playing Valheim with his friends. Oh, the so boring he's... game. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna, I'm gonna, we're going to start playing Valheim, I think, on, on our Sunday community stream because... Get... 
um, we're about to beat the forest. I need a new, I need a new game. And he just got a server for it. So he said we could use it. And apparently everybody's loving it. Like everyone's playing Valheim right now. Apparently it's really, really good. He just started it. It must just, yeah. Giddle sent me the trailer a couple weeks ago and I looked at it and it just looked boring. I was expecting it to be look like more fun, but it just looked like, <laughs> oh, you're just constantly like uh, mining and building shit. Like it was a Minecraft, but for Vikings. I was going to say, but think about Minecraft. That's, there is a lot more that goes on, but think about Minecraft. If you think about Minecraft, it's kind of boring. You think it's like, oh, it's kind of boring. All you're doing is like mining and building stuff and collecting resources and managing shit. But the amount of people that play and watch and how in unbelievably addicting those games can get, you'd be surprised. Once you start playing them, you're like, oh, shit. And you and this you can fight. There's monsters. And like I saw I, I've seen a little bit. I've seen Vinny stream a little bit of it. And there are giant like ant like creatures that you have to fight. And there's bosses like there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. But you build a base. There is a lot of building. There is a lot of mining. You don't have to eat, but you can. That's the cool thing about it. You can to help your stamina, but right. you're not going to die if you don't eat it. Um, and yeah, it's a, it is a little bit more like rust than than Val than Minecraft, I think. But similar sort of thing. Yeah, I have a, a a friend of mine, and she plays in my other D and D group, and she was talking about how she was playing Valheim, and she's loving it. And I told her, I was like, I watched some streamers playing it, and like, I don't know if it's the game for me because it's like it looks like a little more s slower paced. And she basically said what you said, like you really have to be into like resource management shit and like yeah. organizing things and doing stuff. So I think this would actually be the perfect game for Eric because he is great at resource management and organizing <laughs> things and grabbing all of that shit. Like as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh man, this is the game for Eric. Give that, that guy a storage crate and tell him that is exactly what we do. He's our supply <laughs> rate. Wait, what did you just say? She asked if that's what you do during Sea of Thieves. Oh, I said, yes, you are yeah. a supply rate. You go around and you collect everything and you're really good at it. And then you organize it all. Yeah, and then they so yell at me and make fun of me for it. it. And then what happens? They go all haphazardly diving off a ship to attack somebody. And they're like, oh, shit, we don't have any supplies. Yeah, because you were being jerks. And I didn't <laughs> I didn't stack things. anything up. <laughs> but that's but that's what I, I hear Valheim is like. Lots of media like resource stuff and also the thing that is it a lot said, most of it's a grind right I don't, a bit of, I, don't. I think it can be a bit of a grind but i think the thing is too you usually do it with a bunch of people like right. i guess you can go in and play Ooh. by yourself but i think it's yeah you can play with a group so that makes it quicker and easier and i think just the fact that you can go out and kill and fight things and fight bosses and shit like that also really adds to it the thing that was like kind of like a little bit of a selling point to me was something that you mentioned, which is that like you don't have to keep up with shit. Like it's not like, right. oh, you didn't eat. You're going to die in an hour because yeah. you play some survival games and half the time you're like, fuck, I just need to find some food so I don't die. So that way I can continue doing whatever the fuck I was doing that I didn't want to do anyway. But exactly. I just had to do it because it's part of the game. Right. Exactly. Like Knowing that you don't have to do that, like actually is a selling point because I hate that stuff it's like what we talked about like with red dead 2 why i stopped playing it because it would be like you didn't pet your horse enough today now he's gonna go slow i was like fuck the horse he's virtual i'm not petting a virtual horse oh you're talking about red dead horse. yeah well yeah but i'm just saying it's like little like micro tasks that you have to do that like i, I don't like doing in games like yeah. i shouldn't have to do more chores in a video game than i do in real life that's why we <laughs> gave that's why i gave up red dead uh red dead 2 at least the first one was great yeah. the second one was just all this micromanagement shit like you were saying and, and yeah. like you're riding the horse and all of a sudden the horse is starting to buck and slow down it's like because the horse feels dirty you need to pet it and feed it a carrot like we're in the middle of a chase right now we're going after a suspect i can't sit there and fucking reshoe the horse while yeah, this is going on the horse is like i'm not going in the battle dress like this you're like fuck you horse we're gonna die and then you just run the horse off the cliff and it's like you both died you're like good and some and of the people i was playing with them. i'm complaining about this and they go well this is you know this is realistic this is what happened i go no realistic is it's me pulling over getting off the horse and putting the horse down and then moseying down the path myself that's well, realistic also it's annoying the whole realistic thing when you're when you eat it's not realistic in games at all it's like oh i haven't eaten for four hours in the game time to die <laughs> like they yeah, like, really... oh, this chicken will stop that bullet wound. Like, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, fuck right off. It's It would take you at least a week to die of starvation, I feel like, depending on how much body fat you had on you. And they're straight up, like, one day of not eating. Well, you're dead now. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, it's, like, way fuck too off. harsh rules. I'm like, mm. <laughs> Poor Didlotic. He's like, that's realistic for me, Zia. He's like, if I don't eat for a day, I will die. 
well you need to uh get some more supplies in you then <laughs> like don't worry about that like <laughs> oh uh, yeah well but yeah that game looks like it's kind of interesting i might try it i is there like any free to play version of it or do you have to buy it to try it because i think that's my issue with some of these games is i've gotten burned on games in the last year where i'm like oh it's only 10 bucks like what's the worst that could happen and then i play it twice and i'm like oh the worst that can happen is i spend 10 bucks on a game i'm not playing. yeah so like i, I don't think i would like if, to try it but i think if it. you have on steam i think there might be a certain amount of time that you can return a game but i'm not 100 percent sure so don't okay. quote me on that but i think you can look into that and see um but yeah you do have to buy it to try it there's not like a free demo or anything like that but i think that i th I think Steam might have a thing where there's a certain amount of time. If you only play it for a certain amount of time, you can return it. Yeah, they're saying in the chat, uh, Healer's saying that it's 20 bucks, and yeah, you do have to buy it to try it. So I guess okay. that's where Twitch comes into play. You watch some people play it and get a feel for it is the closest you can get to actually putting your hands on the game. But I wrote an entire article about that. You did? No, you didn't. I, I did. You can't put it, words it, together. I can make words sound good sometimes if I do it in a few drafts. Where did you um, write an article? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I wrote an article for my agency's website. It's basically going to live. That's where it's going to live. It was originally going to be for a client. Shield? And then it ended up being, yes, how did you know? God damn it. Shield no, doesn't sword. exist anymore. She's with Sword now. So, yeah, I don't know any of this stuff. Okay. I, 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 I threw out a reference into a world I don't know. I'd like to bail out now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's not watching WandaVision. Oh, that was nope. really funny. It's a Not good show. <laughs> um, but yeah, the article is basically just about how I'm, I'm writing another one. So the first one is about how Twitch can be used as a really great tool for indie developers, especially with smaller indie games. And it was funny, Giddles, when I was telling you about this before, I remember you being like, oh, look at Among Us. And that was the exact example. the exact example that I used in the article because it's just so crazy. It was a game. This was originally, I believe, a mobile game that they then put on Steam for $4.99 that sat on Steam for two and a half years before some big streamer picked it up and then all of a sudden fucking everyone's playing Among Us and they they just got on uh, the Nintendo Switch, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's so, on everything now and it's crazy because yeah. like that company is just like, yo, we'll put out a sequel, but we actually, after two and a half years, didn't think that this game was going to blow up like two and a half years later and we were working on some other things. So I guess we'll put that on the shelf and go back to the first success. Like, Yep, which is which crazy. Is, like, it's crazy, yeah. Yeah. Which is so, funny to me is I see people being like, because like Among Us blew up like really big, like it, mm -hmm. it like blew up so big so fast. Like when you like you saw politicians playing it on Twitch, you're like, this is like crazy. But like the best part is like I see people and they're like, yo, they should make a movie about Among Us. I'm like, they did. It's called The Thing. Like that is literally <laughs> the movie. Like, <laughs> you're right. It actually is. Oh my god. It's the thing. Among Us That's is the so thing. <laughs> uh, Giddles so for uh, for Valheim. Um, Rock is saying in the chat, you have 14 days to return it and you have to, uh, you can't have played it for more than two hours. Well, that's just like, I don't feel like that's enough time to like get a feel for a game, but I guess I get it. Yeah. There should be like their sandwich insurance at Popeye's. There should be video <laughs> insurance this shit. Like I should be able to buy it. And then if I don't like it, I can get another game. Also, also for an extra quarter. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'll do it. I'll sign up. <laughs> Video Burger game insurance. insurance. Yes. Health insurance, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know where I'm winning. <laughs> well, uh, you guys had, uh, you know, interesting weeks. Yeah, I had uh, week, I had a week of uh, what I thought was going to be a lot of ups and turned out to be a lot of sideways. Uh, so the other day was my birthday. Shameless <laughs> plug. And Happy birthday, Eric! Happy birthday wait, wait. To this Eric. is your birthday song. It's not so very long. Hey! What restaurant did you work at to learn that? I, I really didn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I swear that well, wasn't from a... You're way too yeah. late on that, so you're not. You're both not good friends, so I'm, you're both oh. being judged. Uh, I said you <laughs> and said happy birthday on your birthday. I know you did. Yeah, you both I did. made you gather supplies for our trip that night. I know Come you on. did. <laughs> Thank you. It's the gift that keeps on me giving to you. Um, That's a great gift. So, no, so that day I was like, all right, uh going to take off from work and, and just kind of zone out and, and not in deal with social media or any of that stuff, right? So I, I have, uh, if you've been listening or watching the show in the past, I have all of these gift cards that have a ton of money on all of them that I just don't do anything with. So I decided, well, I'm going to go to a mall and try to use some of them and buy some stuff. To a mall? To a mall. There's right. malls? There's still, still like, some malls like, left. This isn't even a pandemic thing. Like This is a, I forgot there was malls 
in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went to a mall and, and you know, the corner st- uh, stores of every mall are called the box stores. So I went to a uh, I went to a Macy's and I have a lot of money to use there. So I said, all right, let me go look around and see what's going on. So I walk in and I see they're moving everything to the far back uh, corners of the store because the summer stuff is all coming in. So anything winter or, or what have you is all being thrown into, you know, on the floor, laying over racks, barely hung up with big 50 to 75 percent sale signs. So um, I'm going I'm looking for a new winter coat. I go and I look and I find one that doesn't have the fucking fake fur around the hood. Every guy's coat has that now. And I hate that. So, I like it. It makes me feel like a Russian lady that should be living in Serbia or something. And I'm like, hello, yes, I am very exotic. Yes. It looks oh, my God. Cute. You'd fit in perfect in my neighborhood, Z. Like, you could put that on. <laughs> people would just speak Polish to you. They would just assume because you are – you look – Polish, like compared to my neighborhood, because everyone's got the blonde hair, like that look. Like if you like, oh, oh, I just need for my kids. They'd be like, here you go, here's pierogies. <laughs> they cover you in pierogies. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm, it looks cute on there. a girl. It doesn't look good on a dude. It looks suspicious. It looks like a Russian mafia guy if you're wearing the fur on that. <laughs> so I'm looking for a jacket that you know, preferably doesn't have a hood, but if it does, doesn't have the 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 fur around it. So finally, find one. It's a uh, really nice jacket it's over 300 bucks and they have the 50 percent off sale and then they had a coupon for an additional 25 percent off that they send you because these stores are trying desperately for years to get men to go and shop in there because they don't normally go in there so they'll just pretty much all but give everything to you to get a guy into the store to go shopping so i go up to the cash register and she's like do you have a do you have a macy's card i do yes i'll just swipe it here okay cool and now they're going through everything and uh she scans the the jacket she scans the the uh the coupon that they sent me and everything and now i have the gift card so i just want to use the gift card right and then all of a sudden she pulls something from the register throws it into the bag and goes here you go so what did, what did you do? Did you just charge my card? Yeah, you're all done. I said, one, I didn't sign. When you use a credit card, you got to sign for the thing. I didn't even sign for it. They, she just bypassed that. I said, two, I've yeah, been holding a gift card to use. I wanted to use the gift card, not have the credit card charge. And she says, oh, they don't expire. You can just use it to go buy something else. And I said, Whoa. I didn't want to buy this on my credit card. I wanted to use the, the thing here, right? She wa- And as I'm trying to explain this, she walked away. While I'm talking, she turned and went that way, went down to another section to talk to another employee where they were hanging out in the back rack area, not doing anything because there's nobody in the store. So I went, fuck this. So I went and I found the customer service section on the other side of the store, walk over there. I go on the line. There's one person in front of me, get to the counter. I explain to the lady what's going on. So she says, okay, we can handle that. And not 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 anything I th- that the lady just charged it, didn't let me sign for the thing and just ignored the fact that I had a Macy's gift card. Charges everything back to my uh, from my card back to the store. She goes to ring up the card again. It's a different price. I said, well, no, no, it's supposed to be this amount. Oh, no, you, it's only that amount if you're using this coupon because you have to use your credit card. I said, you can't have a sale and stuff sent to me saying that I have to use the credit card to get the sale with this coupon. I said, I get it for like a cash back thing, like a Target does with the red card, you get 5% cash back or a gas card, something like those kind of things are bonus reward points. I get that. But if you have a, a coupon for a sale, you can't say you can't take cash or you can't take a gift card. You have to use your credit card in order to get this. And this was like falling on deaf ears, like she didn't know what I was talking about. And she kept saying, no, you have to use your credit card. I said, no, I don't have to use my credit card. So they get somebody else over, a supervisor. Supervisor comes over. I have to explain everything again. So I go through it a third time with all of this. And she goes, well, normally you have to use a credit card. And I kept saying, you don't need the credit card to use the coupon. I said, it doesn't say on the coupon that it must be used with the credit card. I said, I have a gift card here and I have the credit card and I have the coupon here. I said, just use the gift card and this together so I can buy this thing. Because if I have to come in and use every sale with the credit card, I'll never use the gift card. So then I'm sitting on a few hundred dollars on this gift card that will never get spent because the cheaper deal is using it through the credit card. They don't care because they already got the money for it. They have the money for the the gift card. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. exactly. They should just 
do it. It shouldn't be a fucking problem. I know. Who cares so, anymore? Someone physically came into your store during a pandemic to buy something. Give it to them. Yeah, because there's mm-hmm. that's what it comes down there's to. Because there's a few things. Yeah, all right. One, yes, that works. But two, certain things you have to go to a store to get, you know, to try out because it, even if you buy it online, it's not necessarily going to be the right fit. Like that's why Zappos uh, exists because women buy shoes. They try it on. They go, oh, this doesn't fit. They have this re- instant return policy. You drop it back in the box with the label. You send it right back out, so you're not actually shopping in a store. But if you're wearing like a suit jacket or a sports coat or some kind of jacket, you want to try it out because I have this, my thing with my shoulders. All of a sudden, it's like my arms feel like I still have the hanger in the coat. I can't move my arms around, oh my right? Yeah, you did the, the fat guy in a little coat move. Like it's, the, it's sort of like, that. Yeah, it's a fat guy in a little <laughs> coat. So I tried the coat on. I liked it. Everything went through this whole ordeal. Finally. They they ring everything up correctly and they go, all right, here you go. And then, then she says, um, do you still want this was funny, too. So she has the card and she goes, uh, do you still want this? It still has money on it. What am I going to say? Throw it out if it still has money on it. Why would you ask me if I still want it? If it has money on it? Of course, I want it. It still has money <laughs> on it. Oh, wait, what, what if I don't want it? Are you going to take it? Are you going to use it for 100% yourself? Percent they are. Yeah, 100 mm-hmm. percent. They are. So ring all this up and I, I just sat there and I just I walked away and I got the notepad thing on my phone. I wrote it down. I'm like, here's another example of me going out somewhere and everything getting fucked up. Another is it constantly happened. I got trapped in the in the post office last week. I've had problems with movie theaters everywhere I go. I apparently I'm difficult. Because the world around me can't it's, function. It's sounding like it, Eric. Like, yeah. you know, it's one of these things where I'm like, <laughs> you know, like A few, you know, uh, misgivings, I would be like, okay, you know, that's that's an issue. It's every time, Eric. There's got to be something happening here. It's like when you talk to someone who says every single one of their exes is crazy, you're like, hmm, (laughs) it sounds like the problem might be you. What's the common denominator here? (laughs) Yes, Darth Mode, stay home, Eric. I like staying home. I like ordering things online, but sometimes you have to go out and try some things. I'm not buying a car online and just saying, oh, hopefully they're going to send me the right one. You go to the dealership to try it out, to see everything, get all the bells and whistles with it. And then, you know, you come and pick it up when it's available. Certain clothing, you have to go and do that. I went out. I just wanted to have a nice day out where I didn't have to worry about anything. And then just uh, catastrophe happens around. Well, maybe not catastrophe, but... You know, it's a catastrophe. It's a catastrophe <laughs> in my world. My life is so good. My life is so good that the slightest inconvenience is a catastrophe. That is one hundred percent the truth. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, go out with low expectations. I keep not doing that. Everybody wants to try to go out and and work with each other and get be social and everybody come together. Nobody wants to come together. These people didn't want to be at work. I didn't want to be at the mall, but I I needed some place to go. I'll tell you what, like, I totally agree with Darth Mode. I go out with no expectations of anything so that if anything even slightly goes positive, I'm like, yes, it was a good day. Like, you can't <laughs> go out expecting shit to go right because it'll go wrong. Right. Like, you just have to go out there and be like, nothing's going to go right today. And then when it does go right, you're like, fuck yeah, beat the odds that I, I just go out head. with the expectation that I will find some kind of food to eat and that's going to make it a good day. There'll be some kind of snack or some kind of cake or like something that I can get and I get it and I'm like, oh, this was good. Oh, there was at this mall. There's a food court. I got a spicy chicken sandwich to go. The right one from Popeye's, not the crap McDonald's one. Yo, put that McDonald's bullshit. They're trying to give them away now because they can't even sell them. They sell. Every review I've seen online, be it just regular people going out to try it or people who do reviews or are in the food world, have all posted about this McDonald's chicken sandwich and saying how god awful this thing is. And here's the thing, like, and when I say it's god awful, like, it's god awful compared to the other ones. As far as just like a chicken sandwich goes, it's meh. It's like, very it's meh. Not great. It's not great. It's not terrible. Like, like not bad. But it's just like you can't you can't enter a, a chicken sandwich war that's been raging for like two years now and have that as your presentation. Like it just right. does not work. Like you just can't do that. Uh, Zia, the audience is yelling for you to try Popeyes already. What's keeping I know you? I oh need God, to, try to try Popeyes. Popeyes. I've never been to Popeyes. I need to try Popeyes chicken. That's, yeah, I need to it. turn it into a stream. How are you turning your own hair into a wig? 
What are you doing? Know, you kind of have like a Dolly Parton hair thing going on right now. Yeah, I'm liking it. I Because I put it up in the thingamabobber, and now I put the thingamabobber over my face. And so now I've got this this thingamabobber going on. This are is how I would look I, with like... What are you recreating here? Dolly Parton 9 to 5 or Dolly Parton Straight Talk? Which one are you going for? I don't She's know. Vaccine, vaccine, <laughs> vaccine, vaccine. Why did you leave me? Yeah. <laughs> Since we mentioned McDonald's, um, on my Instagram, Iraq Radio on Instagram, I posted a photo that I saw on a big digital billboard in Midtown Manhattan, and it's right in front of the entrance slash exit to Penn Station on 7th Avenue, and it's a hand holding the new chicken sandwich with the caption that says, and this is this is showing you that even McDonald's knows that there's problems in New York, the perfect way to celebrate making it out of the station. <laughs> I kid you not. Hey, not alive. Go look. Yeah, exactly. It's it, 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 like McDonald's is pretty much insist, insinuating that New York is escape from New York right now. Like this is where I we're mean, at. No, I feel like yeah. I don't know. That's just such a terrible ad because you could be like looking down and seeing yourself holding a chicken sandwich in your hand, or you could be looking down and you could be the guy that the homeless guy pushed in front of the train. Right. So like you could be one or the other. I would much rather be the guy with the chicken sandwich. Right. But you know. Both are going to ruin your day. So, like. <laughs> but I took it as this is right where you come up the new escalator. It's right there. You can't miss it. And then it's this big digital billboard. It says the perfect way to celebrate making it out of the station. Like, congratulations, you survived Penn Station. Go to McDonald's and celebrate with a chicken sandwich. <laughs> Did it. Like, I feel like that's just marketing in general now. Since the pandemic happened, like everything that's marketing is just like, hey, you woke up breathing today. Treat yourself. Like it's just like, wait, what? Like, why did it get so bleak? Uh did Lodic in the chat was talking about Popeyes said he hasn't been there since they got rid of their Cajun rice. And I've actually heard that that's a complaint from a lot of people who stopped going. I think to I only had it once. Popeyes after after they got their Cajun rice. Yo, I know people who used to go to Popeyes, they would get the Cajun rice. They get the chicken strips, they get the coleslaw, right. and then they would bring it home and roll it all up into a burrito and make like a Popeye's That burrito. sounds amazing. Right? Get like, little... it sounds great. Is the Cajun rice the, or did they have, the... they had a red beans like the, and rice. It's like the dirty rice kind of stuff. No, it, no. It I... has like the Cajun spices in it. It's not the red beans. Okay, that's what I was saying. I know what the Cajun rice was, but I was trying to remember, did it have, was that the rice with the beans in it or was red beans and rice the other thing? I don't remember. I just remember the the rice that I had was like Cajun rice, and it just kind of looked like Zatarans type stuff. Yeah, uh, Darth Mode saying that beans. rice was terrible. To each their own. I think I only uh, had it, it once, better, so I can't judge than, it. It's better than their mashed potatoes, right? Yeah, they didn't have good mashed potatoes. Like KFC had the you know the 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 fucking instant potatoes with the gravy, but somehow it was still amazing. As far as yeah, fast food, like junk food goes. Yeah, their really good, too. And their chicken tendies. Yep. Give me all of them. Give everything to Zia. Do you have to? Do you have uh, somewhere to go in five minutes? Yeah, I do. Oh, you Jezebel, you. I'm such a whore. Yeah. You tell Chip. You tell Chip, you tell Chip. You tell Chip I called you a Jezebel for constantly going to his show. I'm a podcast whore. You are. I'm gonna, I want to get more podcasts to be a whore on. Oh, that's great put it out there for the <laughs> open i'm gonna go on that show hosted by the rabbi the snip snipperson show it's, uh, <laughs> all day. um all right well before you go because we'll come back and go over tv and movie stuff uh before we go to break here so just breaking did you see marvel's new announcement zia no they what they do they officially announced the mutants as a movie coming to the mcu the mutants the mutants so the Marvel Cinematic Universe is known for being the uh, at the start of the biggest expansion to date with Phase 4. This is kicking off with the highly anticipated season finale of WandaVision uh, before uh, five more Disney Plus shows and four full-length movies arrive within 2021. Uh, they just uh, confirmed for 2022 that they're going to be working on the mutants to bring the X-Men into the fold of the MCU. Motherfuckers! Which one are we getting? So is I don't this know. Like a WandaVision thing, or like it just says here, like Marvel. Uh, the the artwork is being shown. It says Marvel Studio Studios is currently developing an X Men based feature film, tentatively tentatively tied, tentatively titled The Mutants. So right now, that's just the working name. 
Oh my God, I'm really excited. So that's going to happen. Uh, All right, we're going to take a break so uh, Zia can go cheat on us with anybody that uh, will take her. And when we come back, Giddles and I will be doing television and TV updates and then wrapping up everything for the week with this show. Uh, Zia, do you want to do your plugs before you go? Okay, guys, um, go follow me on Don't do the ZMSR (laughs) stuff. Stop that. Go follow me. Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Zia underscore land. It's XIA underscore land. Check out my channel, twitch.tv slash Zia land. I do stream four days a week. Hopefully, I will see you guys there. I know. I I do that because everybody hates it. (laughs) It's so annoying. All right. uh, We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. More. It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Next. Hey, it's Mike Cannon. After you're done listening to this episode of It's Eric Nagel, I invite you to check out the podcast I do with Mike Feeney called The Irish Goodbye Podcast. It's a bunch of hard-living mix that are drinking their way through their comedy careers, which explains exactly why we're right in the middle. So go stream or download The Irish Goodbye Podcast on Gas Digital and also available on Apple and Google Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Check it out. It's Eric Nagel. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and Facebook at It's Eric Nagel. It's Eric Nagel. Eric Nagel. Uh, Eric and Gil is here with you. Segment two of the program. This is usually where we discuss TV and movies and whatnot. Uh, before we went to break, we talked about the new Marvel announcement that just happened that they're uh, officially bringing the mutant world into the MCU. So uh, X-Men stuff is coming. We don't know to what degree other than whatever WandaVision is going to finish up with because it's leading to mutants. Uh, and also we know that Deadpool 3 was confirmed a while back and an R-rated movie. So that is happening. So I'm guessing that's going to be uh, in the mutant universe as well. However, they're going to work all of that stuff. But uh, it'll be exciting to see all of this stuff because I'm a Magneto fan and everybody out there usually has their favorite uh, kind of X-Men or multiple X-Men. Or what are we going to call them? X-They now because of gender stuff? X-Persons? X-People. Uh, X hits. There you go. But like, I just don't have. So how do the worlds just cross over? Because they're, like they're completely different like properties and stuff like that. So how did MCU get into DCU? That's what I don't know. Like comic book wise, like how did they cross over? Uh, well, it's the DCEU. Cause, like, cause, cause it's- it's- share you is it a shared universe like no does spider-man know about Mag- like that's what i don't know like right. how did it so like, dc operate? and marvel two separate worlds right they're not yeah. same they're not I, even I, in I the mean, same universe right so the dc movies are the dceu dc entertainment universe i believe that's what the e stands for yeah. and the, the marvel is the mcu marvel cinematic it's universe extended universe so uh, X-Men and Fantastic Four were uh, had the movie rights by Fox originally, back in the day, before Marvel even started making movies, they sold off their uh, extended universe. Thank you very much, Darth Maul. Uh, the, uh, Marvel was selling off their movie rights kind of piecemeal to whatever studios would actually wanted to option them and make movies. So back in the 90s, you had the X-Men movies and Fantastic Four. Sony got Spider-Man for you know, a ridiculous amount of... Uh, time plus they had like a hundred characters that all fell under the Spider-Man umbrella. So over time they worked a deal while the MCU was building to share the licensing again with Sony and Disney so that Spider-Man could show up in the Marvel movies, the current Marvel movies. And then they reworked a new deal. So now Spider-Man is and all of that stuff is officially part of the MCU with Sony getting producer rights and and other monies going along with this. Uh, The Fox properties, X-Men and Fantastic Four, Disney just bought that in the Fox deal when they took over Fox Broadcasting. Uh, They took all of that away from News Corp, and uh, now that's all back in the house of Disney. So they're rebooting everything fresh into all of this stuff, so everything is 100% their property and 100% under their control. But that doesn't answer my question. (laughs) 
<laughs> my question was, how did they cross over in the comic world? Like, how did Magneto come into... How does how do these worlds combine since they were two separate entities from two separate companies? How do they combine into one thing? Like, how are we going to see DC characters in a Marvel universe you if don't. they existed separately? You That's don't. what I was asking. So then, wait... I'm just confused then. DC, I and, thought you just said that DC they were and Marvel bring mutants in mutants is it was always Marvel, X Men and all that was always Marvel. They were never I mean, DC. I don't know any of these things. Well, I'm telling you, you asked and and, and I'm explaining. What, what, what? So I would yeah, because I guess I was under the impression that like Ma we were going to see Magneto and like Spider Man in the same world. That's what I. Was well, we are going to going forward. We will. But like, this is what I'm saying. How does that happen? How did they? How did they cross? That's what I'm asking. Okay. Like, in the comic books, there's cross? no. In the comic books, X Men is all Marvel. Spider Man is Marvel. Uh, Iron Man, Hulk, all of that's Marvel. In the comic okay, books, it, depending on the story and the situation, they would just cross over. Everything was all in the same world, right? They would just cross over into different things, unless there was like uh, like the multiverse stuff or or, or uh, eternal stuff, celestial stuff. There's all different tiers of uh, characters and levels of power and influence and what have you. So at some point or another, they usually the stories would cross over and they would always meet up with each other. In the movies, they're still building to all of that. WandaVision is going to end somehow with the tie into Doctor Strange two. The um the 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 uh, multi the madness of the multiverse movie that's going to be coming out next year, and that multiverse is going to open up everything else. So that's basically it. So they basically they open the multiverse, and then the answer to everything is like uh, Rick and Morty. Like, oh, there's a million infinite universes where anything can probably. I mean, we don't know yet, but that's the that's the educated guess is that's how they bring a lot of this stuff in. WandaVision's been teasing this thing uh, about a, a an engineer, a flight engineer, which a lot of people are thinking uh, um, is, uh, you know, um, uh, Reed, uh, Reed Richards from Fantastic Four, but it could be a couple other people. You don't know. They're just now starting yeah. to break all of this stuff out. We'll see, uh, well, today, as this the radio show comes out, um, the new WandaVision episode is out, so you probably already know the answer, and you're screaming at us for idiots, but we don't know. We're in the long, long ago at this point. I know who it is, Eric. Who? It's Sully Sullenberger. He's the flyer. He's going to fly the plane. He's the engineer. Not, not working. No. I got nothing. No, you try. I am confused, Brock. I'm so confused. I've seen like literally five of the movies, and I just try and piece everything together with what I think happened between the movies. Right. It's like when uh, Homer has that that uh, he wakes up from the night of the Hangover. It's like scene missing, scene missing, the end. Like that's my knowledge of the uh, MCU. Right. So yeah, I don't know. It just I I was just confused on how the worlds would combine. But if the answer is it's a multiverse, then that's the answer. Like that's the only answer to everything. Well, yeah. Well, um, that will be the answer for I think a couple of things. But uh, they've also announced back at that uh, shareholders meeting last year, we got a whole bunch of st uh, new stuff being revealed as far as things coming out. Like they're rebooting Blade, which yeah, is going to be uh, they're going uh, part of the MCU looks like it's going to go into like a horror division, like with Blade, with Doctor Strange, whatever else they come out with the multiverse stuff. They're going to do some sort of R rated horror stuff with that. Well, Blade was always like in that vein, like he was fighting vampires and it was always oh, yeah. like, a little darker than like other stuff. You know, it wasn't as, it wasn't like as kid friendly as Spider-Man or Batman or something. No, like that. but people were worried, especially with the Fox accusi uh, acquisition that, you know, the new Deadpool, if they kept him, was going to be like a PG-13 movie. Like when they did that, uh, that Princess Bride version of the uh, of the of Deadpool 2. Where he was sitting there oh, telling the story to the kid, and you don't see the blood from the gunshots and all of that stuff. They thought that's what it was going to be, and then they said, "Nope, it's going to be an R-rated movie." So you'll have you'll have uh, you'll have a uh, Blade, you'll have um, uh, Moon Knight, which is sort of almost like Marvel's answer to Batman. Uh, you'll have um, the, the Jared Leto thing, um, Morbius, Joker, Morbius, which is a, a Wait, vampire. So now the Matrix is involved in this. 
Wait, how is the Matrix involved in this? The Matrix is everything. It's all being decoded. Take this pill, Gittles. Wait, so hold on a second. <laughs> Does the MCU and the DCU exist in the world of the Matrix, which was actually just made by computers that they're hooked up to? You're blowing my mind here. Quite Eric. possible. Quite possible. You're but but blowing no. Blowing my mind. So like, there's actually none of this. We're all just hooked up to machines, wondering what. No, Morbius is a vampire character. Which oh. will pair well with Blade. Uh, right now, that's uh, one of the properties that was under the Spider-Man umbrella with Sony. So gotcha. w- we'll see how that all is going to work. And like, there's a whole potential for a dark horror division of the of the Marvel universe, which is going to be pretty cool if they do it right. If they're all R-rated movies, it'll be fantastic. I'm totally cool with that. Yo, bring Cthulhu in here. Let's bring all. Let's mash every world together. That's what I want. Cthulhu want- versus Galactus. The Eater of Worlds yeah, versus the versus other Eater Galactus of Worlds. Doctor Seuss. <laughs> like I want all three of them in there, just like fighting. Like I want every. I want Winnie the Pooh in there. I want. Did you every say Doctor Seuss? Yeah, the Care Bears are in there too. They're like it's not Horton. Here's a Hulk. Like, we are crossing them all over, Eric. Yeah. You're all over the place, Skittles. Just to, just sit down and enjoy it. Show. We'll give you popcorn. You sit there and you watch it, and we'll come back in two hours to see how you're uh, doing. So that's where Heathcliff falls into. He falls into the garbage can because he's always trying to eat fish skeletons because he's stupid and he doesn't know you eat them. Well, Heathcliff he lives in a split reality because yeah. depending, you know, Monday through Thursday was Heathcliff and the, and the, the fucking junkyard cats, but on Friday was Riff Raff with the same junkyard cats and neither seemed to know that they either existed. Like, you never saw Heathcliff with Riff Raff and the friends were all in both shows never seemed to know the difference between the two cats. Well, yeah, because the, well, the, when the multiverse comes out and it's, you know, the the tale of Doctor Strange starring Garfield and then it turns out that Heathcliff is also related to him and the other junkyard cats. It's just it's Yeah, you can't figure it out you can't figure it all out. All in the in the what was the kids sh- uh, company? Deek D I C. It was all in the Deke Cinematic Universe because then you had Heathcliff, then you had Riff Raff, then you had Inspector Gadget and a few other cartoon Dennis the Menace is in there. They're all in the same neighborhood. And it's menace the villain. Yeah, in this in this uh, this crossover children's uh, extended universe we have here. Yes, <laughs> I mean the, the the crossover kids extended universe is basically Shrek. Like let's just that's all those stories in one. Yeah, pretty much. It's all the, hey, Disney doesn't fully own all the rights to this, so we're going to do the Grimm's fairy tale version of that and sort of make it like uh, a big F you to Disney. That's what Shrek was. Fine with, fine with that. Top Cat. Yes, Top Cat. I remember Top Cat. He had like the top hat. He was like really fancy. Thank you, Healer. I don't think he had a top hat. He was a yellow I think cat. He did. He was a yellow cat, and then he had the other little sidekick that kept calling him TC all the time. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Top Cat. Let's see. Uh, it's a barbershop in my neighborhood. Oh no, he wore he wore like a like a like a turban type. Thing. Yeah, uh, Darth Maul. Do you remember DJ Cat? I do. He was a cat with a D with a J and a cat with a K. So you better stick around. Okay, he's DJ. Whoa, Cat, and this is his show. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, Here's the, something you, else I didn't ha- know. Here's something else I didn't know. DJ Cat wasn't an American show. There was an American version of it, but it was a British show and an Australian show. And we just kind of bit DJ off of Cat it. Was really good at scratching. Yeah, it was one of those shows that was on, uh, like here in New York, it was like on Channel 9. It was one of those syndicated shows that just happened to be on yeah. shitty stations in your local area. But it was just some puppet junkyard cat and a, and a girl that lived in an apartment. And then they would show cartoons and weird shit. One episode, like Jake the Snake Roberts showed up for no reason with his python. I'm like, are they going to wrestle? What the hell's going on here? This just sounds like a day in my neighborhood. Yeah. Like the person out there with puppet cats and Jake the Snake Roberts shows up. <laughs> yeah. It's all there. Um, all right. Anyway, let's go through the rest of movies and stuff here. Uh, what do we Bear have? The what? I, know, I was reading the chat. Okay. I heard C. Bear and Jamal. I don't even know what that is. It sounds great. though. Oh, what's this article that you had about Alamo Draft House? What's going on with them? Oh, no. Uh, Alamo Draft House. Uh, I don't know. For, for people out there who don't know what Alamo Draft House is, it's a movie chain that started in Texas where it is a place where you go and see a movie and you can get food and drink and stuff like that. And apparently they followed for like Chapter 11 bankruptcy the other day and like which kind of made sense because their business model is based around people coming into a theater and actually having dinner. Right. Uh, but then after I read the article, it turns out that like it's more of a partner who that they were working with is buying out the company and like just selling it. Like it's, it's all moving within the, like the same parts. So I don't, I don't know if like Almo is going to close. They might just close some locations, but uh, 
there's a so if they're know. selling within their own investors is bankruptcy just like a way of selling it at a cheaper price to just sort of like a formality to move it on instead of having to pay big fees from an actual sale uh that i'm not 100 percent sure i just what i had read was that they had filed for bankruptcy and that someone else had bought it who was someone who was already involved with the company Hmm. Okay. Which I can understand happening. Like, I mean, we had Ample Hills ice cream here in Brooklyn, and they filed for bankruptcy, and some dude from Seattle just bought them. Like I always heard good dollars. things about so, like, Animal Draft happened. House. Like, people loved going there because you get beer, you can get wine, you get drinks, food while sitting there, table service while you're watching the movie. And I was like, that's the way you should go watch a movie. But there was never one around me, so I couldn't go and see it. Uh, it's it was not bad. Like, I went there for a couple of different screenings. Um, I. I never went there for a regular screening. I always went for like the wacky screenings because like, I don't know um, if, if you've never been to an Alamo or if you've been to like a Nighthawk or like one of these other ones, like basically what happens is they have regular movies, sometimes more artsy movies. And then on late nights and on weekends, they do like midnight showings of like cult classics and stuff like that. Right. So I've always went to stuff like that. So I went... Uh, with some friends, and we went to go see a uh, a screening of Spice World, which was fantastic. I don't care. Gittles of the uh, world, think, spice up your life, every boy and every girl, yo, spice up your life. I, I had I had no idea that uh, it was that much of a cult classic till I was there, and like I didn't know either. Run, I just people were running up and down the aisle, screaming and dancing and singing Spice Girl songs, and I was just like, "Yo, this is a ridiculous la, movie. La, I want to see this." La, 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 and then all I remember about last, that movie was Meatloaf was the bus driver. Uh, everything about that movie was just absolutely ridiculous yeah like, it's a really like if you like an absurd movie like it's absurd like the first time i saw it someone's like oh watch spice world with me i'm like is it just gonna be a bad spice girls movie and they're like no it's like cabin boy type of levels of weird and i was like all right well then i'm in and then i watched it and i was like oh yeah it is like there's a scene where they have to jump like uh like the London bridge in a tour bus and they're like, Oh no, we're going to jump the bridge. Now. And then they cut and it's clearly like a toy truck being pulled with fishing line. And it's like, Oh no, we're going to do it. And then it's like in the air and they're like, ah, and they're like, Oh, we made it. Yay. And then they just keep driving. It's really funny. Uh, and then right. I saw the FP two there, which I don't know if you've ever seen the FP, but it is a movie about competitive dance, dance revolution. And it is a, uh, it's like kind of like a grindhouse film and there's, good people and there's bad guys and there's people who are trying to stop the FP because they're the best dancers. I watch bad movies, Eric. I know you like, do, like but this this movies. seemed way out of your wheelhouse, but good for you for no, watching it. Nothing is out of my wheelhouse, Eric. Um, you gotta watch the FP. It's fucking great. Looking, uh, looking at the chat with some updates for Alamo Draft House. Uh, they said they're closing two locations. Uh, one in downtown uh, Austin and in San Antonio. Uh, Alamo still uh, still haven't said when they're locating when their location in Brooklyn is reopening. So that's the one I went to, the one by like Decal, but not far from uh, like Atlantic Terminal. That's the one I went to. Okay. Oh, other great thing about Alamo uh, Draft House: if they catch you talking or texting on your phone, no warnings. They just throw you out. Like it is. Oh wow! Fucking great. Yeah, they'll just come through and be like, "Hey, you talking, texting? You have to leave right now." And there's like no arguing. Like they'll just drag you out. Are you allowed to so, leave the theater, like go to the lobby or something to check and then go back in? 100%. They just don't want you doing shit in the theater. Perfect. Like, That's the totally fine. Talks. If you so, look yeah. down on your phone, you got an emergency call or something or a text, whatever. If you just get up and go out to the ba- uh, out to the lobby or something, all right, cool. They let you right back in. Yeah, that, that's fine. I 100% agree with that. I'm seeing also yeah. in here, too, uh, right. Jay Shep, from, I'm guessing, from Texas with the TX, says that they do theme nights, too. Yep. That's, that's what I was talking about. That's when I saw, like, the Spice World. So the FP, they do, like... Uh, like bad movie nights at midnight. They do cult classics. Each theater uh, has different m- memorabilia in it too. He said this: the one by him has a giant Planet of the Apes statue, and it rocks. Yeah, the um, the one here in Brooklyn. So they have. Uh, I don't know. If it's. I think it's a replica, but it's like of the bomb from Doctor Strange Love. Right. And you can sit on it, and they have like the blown up picture in the background of it dropping, so it looks like you're riding the bomb. Uh, you know, it's pretty great. Huh. But yeah, they have they have a lot of really really fun like movie activities, like stuff that you'd want to go to with your friends, like stuff that like if you're watching a movie at home with your friends, you might actually play along and do and not realize that this is an event. Like the movie theater by me would do this thing called Spoons, Tunes, and Booze, 
and it was like a two hour thing once a month on Saturday mornings. It was a theme and all they would do is show Saturday morning cartoons and they would have an unlimited sugar cereal bar and you could just keep going up and get as much Lucky Charms as you want and then you sit down and you just Oh, I remember you talking about this. You get to like yeah. vote on things and see things and it's fucking great. Like it's so nice to like go there and be like oh well what are we gonna watch now and then everyone like you know puts out their thing yeah nighthawk has that rock and um uh it's really fun like they do band comic uh, band cartoon nights and like it is crazy shit where you're like oh here's a cartoon from the 30s let's find out while it's why it's banned and it's like oh it's because it's called coal black and the seven negroes that's why it's banned that's an actual cartoon wow that is not made up like you can look that up like bugs bunny nips the nips like really racist shit from the 30s the donald uh the donald duck nazi cartoons heckle and jekyll all of that yeah they show show all that stuff so it's like it's really fun to go on stuff like that they do like after school special ones where they would show like they did the saved by the bell uh drug episode they did the animaniacs episode where they accidentally get drunk and drive off a cliff and die and it was only aired once and then it was banned and pulled from the air because they they would never replay because they got drunk and killed themselves i like, wonder if it's on my box sets you might be able to i'm gonna go look for that because i don't remember that one about, uh, see kids uh, this is why you still need to buy physical media for a lot of things because somewhere down the line they'll be go oh that character is not appropriate for today's standards or the content in this episode is not good we're not keeping that in syndication or we're not publishing that anymore well you have the box sets so that you have everything well, what was funny too is we were watching the Animaniacs one and like and this was was like doubly weird because like this had, this had all just happened at the at around the same time so we watched that one and it was you know they all drive off the cliff and stuff like that and then Yakko at the end is giving like a little monologue right and he hold and he's like well that's just me and he holds up the newspaper and it just says call me Yakko and it has like a picture of him like this but it that and it came out like no joke we watched this episode like a week after the Caitlyn Jenner thing came out and said, call me Caitlyn. And we're like, wait, what did like Animaniacs predict this? Like it was just a really weird like coincidence <laughs> that like that happened in an Animaniacs episode. Like completely unrelated, completely off topic. But yes, uh, they have quote alongs uh, with stuff like Clue. So I'm yes. guessing they do stuff like Rocky Horror or uh, Monty Python, yeah, and the Rocky Holy Grail, Horror, things the like room. that. Like the room where they people bring spoons. Does and, everybody you know, go? Oh, uh, hi, Mark! Is like the whole theater doing that? <laughs> That's yeah, horrific. I mean, there's certain things like that, like Big Lebowski Fest, where they have like about you know, everyone dresses up and watches the Big Lebowski. Like stuff like that is like too much for me. Like I would like to just go and watch it, but like the people who really are like, no, I'm the dude. It's like no, you're not. You're just somebody who looks like them and fell into this position of pretending you're the dude. Like I don't know. But it's 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 cool. Like anytime a movie theater is like a theme night, I recommend check it out. If movie theaters ever open again, go. If there's an if there's a Nighthawk or an Alamo near you and they do things like this, go check it out. Go to like midnight screenings. Like they'll show crazy things like frogs or Black Devil Doll from Hell and like weird things that you would never see. What was that recent movie that we watched that after you showed it to us, everybody else started talking about it? Psycho Gorman. Yeah, Psycho Gorman. Psycho Goreman was great. That might be a good movie. If you guys to show. haven't seen it out there? Like, yo, go watch Psycho Goreman. It's amazing. Uh, I'm curious uh, if the mask will, li- uh, the mask lift, if they will open here. Um, maybe. I mean, they said that Texas was going to reopen everything, so I would assume. So. Yeah, Texas is uh, leading the way. It's it was interesting. So the governor the other day said, well, I'm opening everything. Like he was crazy about it. I was like, I'm opening everything. We're lifting the ban. All everything's open. We're not doing this anymore. Blah blah blah. Then Biden came out. And uh, was saying, it's, it's like, I hope you use your common sense. I hope you're not going to do this anymore. I hope you. And then another Texas official, I don't remember if it was a senator. I, f- I just saw the thing earlier. Um, there was a Texas government official that just went off about Biden saying, don't preach to our state. We'll do what we want to do. I was like, Texas is fucking crazy. It's like, how about you worry about the water first and feeding the people down there and then maybe worry about the masks. Do that second. It's a- it's just like it's just to me it's just dumb like i mean we've done this for what a year lieutenant governor thank you jay shop but like like we've we've been doing this for a year right like imagine this is a marathon and it was like a one-year marathon and in the last month you're like yeah i see the finish line right there but i'm just gonna take a nap and smoke some cigarettes like no finish the <laughs> fucking race like don't take a break don't stop like they'll catch up to you like like i don't understand this but 
it's a it's another situation. Will they open movie theaters down there? Probably. I mean, I would assume that uh, uh, if that you were there, that they would probably make you wear a mask in a theater if they're going to reopen. But I honestly. Jay Shep saying uh, 10 days, no water here in Austin. And they're talking about the masks. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like, right. It's just, hey, how can I have water? No, you can go to the store now. I'm like, but I just want to drink from my sink. <laughs> uh, let's see what uh, else. Well, hopefully you're okay down there, Jay Shep. I hope you didn't lose power or anything for too long and that uh, you weren't like too deeply impacted by it. I have some friends in Austin and they said uh, they got lucky. But they said other people who literally lived across the street lost everything while they had all their power. So it seems like a weird situation there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because when I was watching on the on the, the network news earlier today and I was seeing that they were still doing they're going to keep those programs that are helping. Uh, it's all free food donations, feed uh, free water and stuff to everybody down there who needs it. Uh, the government, both local, state and federal said the funding for this will go on as long as it's needed. So the people down there who don't have water, don't have food. Like some seen people that had these big Rubbermaid uh, tubs out in their backyard when it was raining. And then they brought them all into like their carport. And then they were using that to flush the toilet, to brush their teeth. Yeah. Like it's just terrible and disgusting. And I feel really bad for those people. But at least we know those programs are going to keep going um, for as long as they need it back there until they can get all that shit sorted out. And that doesn't look like it's going to be done anytime soon because, yeah, we're two we almost two weeks into it and they're still like, oh, I don't know what to do here. We're trying. Yeah. Oh, well. They'll get there eventually. Uh, back, to, yeah, back to movie stuff here. Uh, stuff coming out this month. The Kingsman prequel for the Kingsman franchise is coming out on On Demand on March 12th. March 18th, Justice League Snyder Cut finally is going to be here and done with. I have no faith in this. I'm tired of, of reading about this stuff. Every time it's like, oh, what this could mean? What could that could mean? And they're like, you know, um, my favorite was they were saying it was one of those Facebook publications where, you know, they just say shit to get people riled up and get the clicks and what have you. But they were saying that the MCU stole the whole layout of how they did from Zack Snyder's layout. And I said, what the fuck are they talking about? So I had to go and read Iron this Man stuff. Iron Man was out in, what, 2007, 2009, like, I before, think. Like, yeah. Way before he was doing that stuff. Like, I, I remember Man of Steel coming out around the same time, but I don't think that was directed by Zack Snyder. Man of Steel was way later. Um, yeah. So you had Iron Man that was 2009. Then they were saying, oh, there's Captain America is going to come. And then you know, they already had that second Hulk, which is officially part of the MCU, where Edward Norton was the Hulk. And uh, what's oh, who was the guy who played the abomination? Um, uh, Tim Roth, I think, was the abomination oh, in that one. Yeah. So we were on. The, we just started the show at Sirius XM in 2014. Remember when Disney came out with the next two phases and goes, here's what's happening over 10 years. And we were talking about like, who's planning all this out in 10 years? Like everyone thought this was ridiculous, but because they did it, they knew how to sew everything together and they knew where their end goal was, which was end game for the first, you know, this, the, uh, infinity phase of everything that was going on. The first, uh, three phases there. And now we're going into four and five with all of this other stuff, but they had it all planned out. So I'm reading, I'm like, why are they comparing this to Zack Ryder? What did the end, what did Mike, like Kevin Feige, st uh, steal? From Zack Snyder, and they're saying, oh, look, Zack Snyder said when he was doing Man of Steel, then it was going to lead to this, going to lead to Justice League, then Justice League 2, then Justice League 3 was going to be the end of all of this stuff. They would all branch out into their own individual movies. It's like you can't have the big finale-style movies introducing all the new characters. You need to have that build up to get to that point. That's why Endgame and Infinity War had such a big impact, because this was 10 years of movies and storytelling all coming to a head where you knew every player on the field while this was going on, you knew what led up to this. You can't have a big movie like that and go, oh, here's Cyborg. Guess what? Robin is alive. Here's four different Robins that are coming into the story. Here's Teen Titan. It's like you're introducing all these people now. Now you're yep. going to do it. And that's why he didn't get greenlit for two and three because the first movie obviously was terrible. They gave him all this money to do the second one here. It's going to be like four hours for this movie. I don't know who's going to like this. It's well, going to be know, here next week, and we'll be done with it. 
Well, like a few things. Like one, the like the biggest problem, and this isn't just Zack Snyder, but it's like just the DC EU in general. Like the problem that they have is what you just stated. It's that Marvel put in all the legwork and planning to make this entirely successful division of like you know this their the production company. And DCU looked at all their success and basically just said, we want that success, but we're not going to put in any of the legwork. So we're just going to throw everything into this and hope it makes that. And it doesn't like yeah. it doesn't work. And that's the that big situation. And I'm like, I don't watch the movies and I can tell that that's why there's problems. You know what I mean? Like for an idiot like me to be able to realize like this is why it's stupid. Like you got to be fucking up. For Gittles in the movie theater yelling, we want Chili Willy while all this is happening. And you go, this is nowhere near what you think this is going to be. No, and he's understanding you, it. Like, you, did I talk about this last week? I don't know if I did because everything blends together in my head about the new Zack Snyder movie that's coming out for Netflix. Wait, I think we did. What's it called? Is this the uh, zombie movie with yeah, Dave Batista? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we did talk about that. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward because, to that because I like Dave because, Batista. No, I'm looking forward to it because it's the second movie that he wrote and directed. And the first movie that he wrote and directed is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. So that's why I'm like really hoping that this is going to be a fucking nightmare. And that's why I can't wait for it. All right. Um, it's going to be great. Correction, I by the way. Did, yeah. I didn't realize they, they had changed the date and did Lodic was updating this. So The King's Man is not happening in March. They moved it to August 20th. So I didn't have that okay. updated information. So forget I said all of that. Uh, still March 18th on HBO Max. Um, the Justice League Snyder Cut will be there. March 26th on HBO Max and a theater uh, theatrical release. King Kong vs. Godzilla. That's coming. Ooh. I'm waiting for that. I just pre-ordered. I couldn't help it. The, the Funko, the 10-inch Funko Godzilla. I had to. Godzilla, dude. I had to. And then uh, Bob's Burgers movie on April 9th. Everything else is still a bit of way out, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Moving over to TV and streaming. Next Wednesday, 8 p.m., set your DVRs. Or if you have the Viacom, what, what's the Viacom streaming service now? Oh, no, they're not on the Viacom streaming service. They're on HBO Max, South Park. For some reason, it's weird because CBS All Access is now becoming Paramount Plus, I think. It was either this week or next week it, it officially turns on as that. South Park is a Viacom property, but somehow the deal was made with HBO Max. They got it for that was one of those five hundred million dollar shows. Yep, like Friends and Seinfeld. South Park was five years for five hundred million dollars on HBO Max. So anyway, we had the pandemic special back in the fall. Now we have the South Park spelt with a Q for the vaccine special. So it's dealing yeah, with the vaccine great. and QAnon. And all of that. So that'll be hilarious to see what South Park does with that. That's Wednesday, March 10th at 8 p.m. Make sure you set everything for that. Uh, speaking of the Paramount Network, they announced a revival of one of my favorite shows of all time, Frasier. They signed Kelsey oh. Grammer, but there's been no word if they signed anybody else from the cast. you got to sign David Hyde Pierce. The father, unfortunately, has passed on. Uh, the, uh, the gentleman who played Martin, I, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. But that show was so amazing. It was one of the best sitcoms. I mean, that's up there, like, all in the family level fucking legendary status for that sitcom. See, I never I never watched Frasier. I've heard it's good, but it's I just so never good. really watched it. Because all I could think of when I hear Kelsey Graham is him falling off the stage. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, yeah. good Lord. <laughs> or getting hit with a rake and just going... <laughs> <laughs> As yeah. Sideshow Bob. Like, yeah, I, I didn't watch it, but I've not, everyone tells me great things about him. Frasier is amazing, and he's the longest running character in television history because he Whoa. did uh, 10 seasons of Cheers and 11 seasons of Frasier, all as Frasier Crane. So, that's crazy. Yeah, right? But that's like, you know, one of those shows where, like, you know, sometimes the spinoff is more popular than the original, but, like, to come from Cheers, which was a hugely successful show, huge to have a huge show. spinoff, yeah. like, I mean, that's like Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. You're like, how could this follow it up? And then Better Call Saul is like, nope, this is a great show. Yeah. And it and it's, it takes place in the same universe. Like, people who are good writers can just pump out good shit is what it they comes did. down that, to. And then know? Frasier was definitely, because when you saw the end of Cheers and you heard going into that last year of Cheers that Frasier was going to be the spinoff, you, you would think Frasier is going to be the spinoff. You would think it would be like Sam or Woody or something like that. And, and it's like, no, they went Frasier and they were right to do so. 
because that show thought like how much they could do with his character whereas like sam and all those they're kind of one notish mm-hmm. and like frazier is like a very in-depth character because like, he's, he's an intellectual of- but he's also an idiot at the same time exactly yeah and uh, a lot with and him. adding in the radio element which is what got me to watch it at such a young age when that i think it was 13, you like 14? radio, Eric? I'm surprised. Yeah, I, I don't really talk about it that much, but I was watching, yeah, and he, he apparently plays a radio psychologist, and it's all about a lot of it's about his radio station, and uh, that got me locked into it, and it's it's I can't recommend that show enough. I don't know what platform it's on currently. I uh, well, obviously Paramount Network. Stupid me. Well, I just started gonna, the whole thing with gonna- this. Are they going to put the previous episodes on the yeah. Paramount Plus? Or here's here's oh, what's uh, interesting. Jake saying it's on Hulu. So maybe I'll watch. Maybe I'll watch it and catch up or something like that. Because I've never seen it. how many seasons. You said thirteen seasons. Uh, no, there's eleven seasons of Frasier. Oh, so many seasons. Is each season one episode? No, there's like twenty two episodes each season. So there's like six thousand episodes. Yeah, like a good amount. But they're really good. They really do uh, get better and better. Because they're right. so vicious and so bitter. It really is such a well written And the contrast between I mean, those two and their father, who's just this blue-collar, beer-drinking guy who was a cop who was injured and living with Frazier because you know, he had to leave the force on disability. So he's this blue-collar kind of everyday guy, and these two prissy guys come home, and they're drinking sherry and, and listening to the opera and talking the ballet, and the father's making fun of them. And it, like the whole dynamic of everything just works. Well, let me tell you something, something that I honestly did not know uh, was that the episode of, uh, and once again, sorry, folks, this is a Simpsons reference, yeah. but the episode where Silent, uh, uh, I almost said Silent Bob, <laughs> where Sideshow Bob's brother, uh, Nigel or whatever, comes to like hatch the plan. I didn't know that that was a spoof on Frasier that entire time. Oh, Cecil. I did not. Yeah. Yeah. Cecil. It was Bob I did and not Cecil. Know that I did not know that that, and everyone was like, "Isn't this really funny?" Because they were on Frasier together. I'm like, "Oh, I didn't. I never watched Frasier." Yeah. So that, like, I that was another level that I missed to that. So people were like, "Yeah, it was really funny how they were like playing kind of the characters they did on Frasier." Yeah, they make a Maris joke, which is uh, uh, Niles' wife that you never see in the show. Like they kept yeah. that going from Cheers. In Cheers, uh, Norm's wife Vera, you never saw. You heard of. Or she was—it was a fo- like a one-sided phone call thing all the time. But you never saw her. They did the same thing with Maris, uh, his really uh, rich, obese wife. Um, that he was, <laughs> that it was constantly just you know at ends with, and uh, yeah, for the whole run of the season, you never saw the wife. So they were good at doing psych gags and one-sided lines and and all that. Yeah, you get a chance. I think it's going to the Paramount Network, but it, uh, they're saying it's on Hulu right now. Here's the thing. All these shows that you may have grown up with and you're like, oh, that X-Files used to be on Fox and Golden Girls was on NBC. You know, all these classic shows that people love. It doesn't matter what network they were on when they initially were on anymore because now the the, the power uh, dynamic has changed. It's not about the networks anymore. It's about the production companies that put these together. So... NBC launches Peacock, right? Which is the joint version of NBC and Universal because all the networks now have a movie studio component with them. ABC Disney, yeah. NBC Universal, CBS Paramount. And Fox is now under Disney, which was its own thing, but y- y- we know that. So when you think like, oh, Friends in the Office are going to be on the NBC on the Peacock thing. No, they're not because NBC doesn't own the rights to them. The production company does. So the Peacock and uh, the Peacock doesn't have that. Friends and The Office, I think, are on HBO Max because okay. of the production companies and what the deals are. Like either Warner Brothers has uh, owns those production companies or they have deals with whatever it is. It doesn't matter the network anymore. It's who owns the production rights to it is where you get placed all the time. So, yeah, Frasier, longtime NBC show, is going on the Paramount Network with all of this. It's confusing. See, that- There's too many streaming networks. And- yeah, and that makes this that makes sense to me too because there always there's always different like you know parent companies and like things that are under the umbrellas of them because I saw something uh, today that I did not know was going to be on Paramount Plus and even though I don't have it I think it's very exciting for people who uh, who do have Paramount Plus and that is all the episodes of the State are going to be on there so if you've never seen the State you can catch up on that yeah but that's the other thing too. Some of those production companies had the foresight to make those um, music copyright deals. 
that the yeah. music they would use in a show would be used for however this show was uh, distributed in the future. A lot of these companies didn't do it. WKRP, again, another show that was on for five years, was about a radio station. When they went to put that out on DVD, the production company that owned it didn't have the rights to the rock music they were playing at the station. So they just had all this generic sound-alike shit in there, and it sounded so fucking terrible when he would come out of the record and say, talking about like... uh, He's talking about like the New York Dolls or the Ramones or Led Zeppelin or something like that. And you know that wasn't the song that was playing, yeah. you know, but that's what happened with the state because the state uh, was on MTV, which ran like a radio station. MTV paid all the, the rights to ASCAP and BMI to use all the music, however they saw fit for their productions. But when they put the DVD set out, which I have and go to watch it and you go, this isn't the music that was in this bit. I remember the one where... Um, the guy, um, the guy and the girl were on the couch and they were kissing and you would see their hormones dancing up and down, like in the pink pajamas and the blue pajamas. When that whole thing ended and he left, she went back down to start, you know, like taking care of herself with her leg over the couch and you would hear the Humpty dance and they started grinding and humping on each other and all that shit. But then you're hearing like some weird fucking generic bed and you go, this just ruins the whole bit because they didn't have the the rights to to use the music that made the, the, made the bit funny. Yeah, and like and like that does suck, but you could still get to see the state. So like, there's a lot of people who I know who've never seen it, and like I think it's hands down probably top three sketch comedy shows for me of all time. And uh, I just think like the amount of careers and productions and so many things that like have spawned from the state. It's just like it's so good. Yeah. Uh, like you know, it's th- all this like monkey torture holds up great. No music in that. <laughs> I sketch. forgot about monkey torture. Monkey yeah, torture. So what do you do? Because uh, Thomas Lennon torture. is a fucking genius at everything he does, and it's so just good. such one man Jurassic Park. Yeah, he's <laughs> not. Around. He's not the over the top like wh- got to be like loud comedy sidekick. He's the straight man in a lot of stuff, and uh, like when they did Viva Variety. Right. Yeah. Remember that he was the straight man to let Carrie Kenny do his stuff, and then Michael Ian Black being what was it Johnny Green Jeans his name yeah. when he would go crazy and do all that shit. But yeah, when he was an exclusive monkey torture, it was all in the, yeah. in the alliteration and the and the cadence of how he did all of that stuff. Oh, wow, I got to go back and watch that. <laughs> I forgot the all game, about the that game show where they don't win prizes; they win orphan children. Th- that <laughs> look, and they're like uh, they're like uh, so name a car, and it's like blue sorry <laughs> you don't you lost all your orphans and then they're they're just looking at the orphans like, <laughs> like wait a car can be blue uh, two oh, my, you win the orphans anyway two of my favorite bits from from the state and then we got to move on with the rest of this but two of my favorite bits from the state were one was when they did mtv sports where the guy was being dan cortez oh, sports, 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 and he was like yeah. golf 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 is a game golf is a game that you play and today we are like he was going fucking yeah. nuts and then he just brought it in real quick to try to be a sports announcer and then like he hits the ball it doesn't go into the hole and it's just right at the edge of the cup and he gets down on the green and starts going bah, 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 bah. <laughs> like just going oh, fucking yeah. crazy yeah who apparently has an extraordinarily raunchy podcast about just like he does uh, his his sexual life yeah my one friend li- listens to it and he's just like it's intense he's like it's really funny but whoa <laughs> <laughs> uh Someone in the chat here. Uh, my husband yells, "I'm gonna st- stick my ball." That was Louie, right? I'm gonna it's dip my thing. balls in it. You know you what know I'm gonna, what gonna say. say? No, we don't. You know what I'm gonna say? <laughs> no, we, we don't. You yeah, know so what I'm gonna say? And then they all do right. it. Of uh, the other, yeah, the other. You, you, Paramount <laughs> Plus definitely watch it. It's great. The other bit, the other bit I loved was uh, when they did the running talk show in the park. Oh, where the yeah. the bands running backwards playing the guy looks like Paul Schaefer from Letterman and he's host and everything the audience is following and running and and then they like they introduce the guy from the Spin Doctors and they turn and he <laughs> hits the tree and they're like oh well and they just keep going and they just and then you see in later sketches every time they're outside you see the talk show in the background just running like they kept weaving it in and out of other stories so good oh my god the one with the, one with the, with the sneakers and they're like we have sneakers that have piggy shoes and they make piggy sounds on the heel when you step down on the heel it makes sounds of a pig because these are piggy shoes it just keeps <laughs> talking like that it's so fucking funny um, a while back uh, if you want to dig through my Instagram Iraq Radio on Instagram I posted a clip of something I was watching on the state I forget what it was but I hear the music come in 
and it's a wrestling theme. And they go, that's not a, that's not a generic song. How are they playing? And it was the theme to the Hardy Boys, who were a wrestling tag team for like the last twenty years in the in the WWE. And you hear the music, and I'm like, how are they playing the WWF stuff? So I look it up. Turns out when they were debuting this tag team, uh, they didn't have a theme written yet, so they just grabbed some licensed music and used that as their theme, and it just kind of grew in popularity. So that became their theme. But at that time, that music was still available to purchase for anybody who paid the uh, amount for the library. So it was showing up in other projects before WWE started using it. And then WWE had to go and buy the rights to to that thing so that they couldn't be using it in TV and movie and all that stuff. Dude, that like that happened all the time, like because I worked in TV. So like I would have to go through music libraries and try and find tracks that fit. And like when I found out that. All the music from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is all just generic music. It's just it's literally from a lot a music library called The High Life. And that's what that music is from. Uh the Futurama theme song, generic stock music from a library. It's just it is? Future song. Yeah, it's just I was going through one thing one day, I'm like, huh, this sounds like the Futurama song. It's the Futurama theme. It's just stock music from a library. Like it just fits. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, because that's pretty so much- iconic for because of that show now. Yeah, that like I said, that it's always sunny music is all samples. Like it's well in in watching it's sunny, always sunny in Philadelphia makes me re- uh, reminds me of Steve C, who used to you remember Steve? He used to produce oh, yeah, uh, with me for Opie and Anthony. Steve had this library set that he loved using. It was called TV Dinners, and it was just all this old, just this all um, I don't want to say stereotypical, but classic style music for 50s and 60s nuance and and home style living and stuff and you hear that song because it's a library and and steve used to use that stuff all the time and then you see them as transitions in always sunny well like when they show up at somebody's house you're hearing the music play and like oh yeah that's from the tv dinners uh production library um speaking of of, of so much stuff from production about production libraries and music rights and all this other shit. Yeah, we didn't talk about this, but a couple of weeks ago, Metallica was doing a live concert for BlizzCon, which oh the, the video game one of the best things. I've ever seen. So the yeah. video game company Blizzard has their own convention, like they're that big, and they have a lot of it. They have, uh, I guess, Fortnite would would be for regular people that don't know much about video games. You, you've heard of Fortnite somewhere. Fortnite was one Fortnite of the biggest. The what? Fortnite would not be a BlizzCon. Isn't Fortnite Blizzard? BlizzCon is no, it's Epic. I swear Fortnite I thought they were Blizzard. Not Blizzard. It's Overwatch, uh, StarCraft, Warcraft, Overwatch, Hearthstone. God damn it, yeah. All Diablo, right. yeah Diablo 2 remastered J Shep. That shit's gonna be awesome. Can't wait for that. Um yeah, you're uh, right. It, it, it it's Overwatch, not Bl- all right, sorry. I thought for some reason Fortnite was part of Blizzard. Yeah. It's it's epic. Anyway. These big games, it's a big industry. They have their own con every year. So they get Metallica to come and play a full concert on the, uh, I don't know if it was on the floor, if it was remote, wherever they were doing for, uh, for, for BlizzCon. They're streaming it on the BlizzCon Twitch channel. Twitch recognizes this is copywritten music and starts playing generic music over the fucking Metallica concert. And everybody's just recording, like, you're seeing Metallica rocking out, and you're hearing... It is, like, I joke that, like, there's very few things on the internet where I'm like, oh, like, you know, beyond a surface laugh, where I'm like, oh, that was pretty funny, where I had, like, a good belly laugh. This is a good belly laugh moment, because it is Metallica shredding, and it's 8-bit glockenspiel music playing. I'm like, ding, 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 ding. It's like, it's, they're not even playing the instruments that would make those sounds. Yeah. But this also goes to show you how fucking archaic and crazy, like, Twitch's DMCA uh, takedowns are. Like, clearly, like, they got the rights to have Metallica play their own song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... Like how like Twitch is just nuts. But they didn't. Here's videos. the thing: they probably didn't think to clear it with Twitch, <laughs> even though Twitch is a partner. They still didn't go through and say, "Hey, look, you need to turn off these sensors or this algorithm, whatever it is that detects the music, off our channel for this because this is a paid deal. It's all cleared and what have you." They didn't do that, which is one of the reasons why when you're watching this show, you can't hear a lot of the stuff that we have on the iHeart show. So if you download the show on iHeart or wherever you get podcasting like that, you hear the music, you hear the commercials, you hear the production, you hear a lot of this stuff 
because it's cleared on that end, but it's not cleared through here. So yeah, yeah everything's like, there's like, it all comes from here and then goes into five different directions to make, well, this place can hear this, but this place can't hear that. And this place has to get something special over here. It's just so fucking ridiculous. I get it. People want, you know, you got to pay the, uh, the writer's royalties and the performer's royalties on that. I'm not saying, you know, don't pay the musicians for this shit, but there should be a license fee you can pay and go, hey, look, I'm going to pay a couple hundred dollars and I get to use this for the month or for the year or something like that. They just don't do that. Yeah, I think it, Yeah, I think it's funny because Jay Shep kind of pointed out in uh, the chat here that Healer made the point of them being the forefront of Napster, which was shutting people down for illegally, you know, sharing their music. Right. So the irony of them actually playing their own music and then being censored for trying to play their own music because of copyright laws that were probably implemented due to them is yeah. kind of funny. It is very funny. <laughs> oh, well. Um, uh, yeah. well. Since we were talking about the state, a show that's in that vein, Party Down, which was oh a very God. limited series. I think it only got two seasons with a handful of episodes, right? Uh, where can you watch Party Down now? Is it still on Netflix or did they move it somewhere else? Not on sure. It was a star show, so it might be on um, uh, Hulu. Okay. Well, check any of your Thanks. platforms. I don't know off the top of my head, but if you haven't seen Party Down, you really need to watch it. I cannot recommend the Steve Gutenberg episode enough. It was hilarious. The whole show's hilarious. Every, every about that show is just uh, so some members of the state shit. are in it. Jane Lynch is in it. Adam Scott, who you know from uh, Parks and Rec and, and, and various other projects, uh, he's in it too. It's an amazing show. They just announced they're going to do a revival of, of Party Down, and this is great because they did it with Wet Hot American Summer. Remember, they had the movie. And then uh, they just did a whole bunch of stuff for Netflix where they had a second movie and then they had like a mini series uh, where they all came back to camp and everything. And and it worked. Party Down is in that vein of the state and and those kind of quirky kind of offbeat sitcoms where this will work, too, if they do it right. If they get everybody back, I'm sure you'll get Jane Lynch and Ken Marino and, and Adam Scott and all those people back in to do it. Well, the brilliance about Party Down is that like Party Down took a very familiar trope and kind of turned it on its head. So like in a lot of shows, it's just like, oh, here's the main characters. And this is like, you know, the thing that's going to happen to them this week. Whereas like Party Down is like you're always know what's happening with them, but you don't know what kind of party they're going to be catering. Right. So it's always like that's always the oddball thing. Like there's always the main story of what's happening with them. Uh, but I mean, also, here we go. Another state tie in the episode where Tom Lennon, where they're catering the orgy and it's the orgy that he yes. didn't tell people was the orgy. And they're all like, when, what are you talking about? When are things going to happen? And they're like the uh, the unexpected orgy. Oh, my God. So funny. I'm going to so, go back and rewatch it. I haven't seen that show in years. I've got to go back and watch it. Uh, Darth Mode is saying that it's Party Down is on Hulu, and it's also on the Stars app. So there you go. If you can go check that out, go watch Party Down. Um, Kids in the Hall is great, too, Healer. Healer saying he gets skits from Kids in the Hall in the state mixed up a lot. Yeah. Kids oh, in the Hall, man. fantastic. Uh, we had them up at Sirius XM. was one of the best days ever, getting to meet all of them. Uh, Brain Candy is another one of those movies that got critically panned, what have you. But if you sit down and watch it, it is fucking hilarious. If you, you got to pay attention to it. For a movie about tuning out and getting all fucked up, you really have to pay attention to it. But Brain Candy is really good. Oh, my God. There was an episode of Kids in the Hall, and it was like it was just this dumb skit. And it was like, because, I mean, you know, all the skits that for Kids in the Hall were like pretty, pretty stupid and, like, you know, ridiculous. But it was one of the skits where like no one says anything and they're just kind of going through actions and stuff like that. So there's a guy and he needs a job. So he goes to the job because he needs he needs like a hundred bucks to like pay for something or something like that. So he goes to the job and he gets the job and then they hold up a sign. It's like you need work boots to work here. So then he uh, uh, goes to the store. He buys uh, the work boots for a hundred dollars and then he gets in the truck and their truck is like, oh, yeah, we're going to drive you to the job. And all the truck does is drives them to the middle of the desert, robs them of their shoes and then puts the shoes back on sale and leaves them in the desert. And I just I don't know why, but it's like one of the funniest skits. And I laugh so fucking because it's so absurd. Oh, uh, uh, if you're going to so absurd, if you're going to talk about that. One of my favorite kids in the hall was the one called Daddy Drank. And it's a kid telling a monologue and then it's just it's a camera from an angle of a bed looking up and it's uh, uh, Dave Thomas coming in there all hammered and just telling this kid horrific shit and just yelling at the kid all the time. And then it would cut back to uh, Kevin. Uh, why can't McDonald? Kevin? McDonald, yeah. 
where he would be uh, doing the, the the narration about what's going on. And then it would cut back from the view of the kid, and he's like, "What are you doing in here?" And he's got like a chainsaw or a whip or something. Like yeah. <laughs> there was all different shit going on. But yeah, Daddy Drank was was hilarious. Uh, let's get through the rest of this so we can get out of here. Uh, Simpsons got review uh, renewed for seasons thirty four and thirty five. This show is just never. This show will outlive us, Skittles. Oh, one hundred percent. It's just never like, going to stop, and it makes a ton of money for Disney. It makes a ton of money for Fox. That's a, that's twenty five seasons past when I pretty much stopped like caring about it, right. which is crazy to think of. That it is two decades worth of episodes that have ha- aired since the one decade of it I liked. Right. <laughs> I got to catch up because I haven't seen anything since season thirty. So. I got so a lot to catch up. I on. got a lot to catch up on. Catch uh, up on that. I'll catch up on Facebook. On uh, Amazon Prime, out today, coming to America or coming to America number two, to how, depending on how Ooh. you want to read it, uh, is out now. I'm going to go watch that. Um, on like we said last week, the new reboot of Punky Brewster is out on on Peacock, but she has a documentary that's coming out on Hulu on March 12th called Kid 90 Nine O. So apparently, what she did. Well, she had a camcorder in the late 80s and the early 90s, and there was only so many kids that were working in Hollywood right now. They all hung out with each other. She had camcorder and had all these tapes of just taping parties, going to the mall, all weird kind of fucked up shit that was going on with these kids. She just put it all together in a documentary, and now is releasing it, and she's like, this is going to open up a, like a whole Pandora's box of shit. But she got testimonials from like Mark Paul Gossler, who was Zach Morris, um, Brian Austin Green, the Corys, like all these people are involved. Sarah Gelbert from Roseanne was in there. So it's supposed to be pretty interesting and pretty fucked up for the time, because this is like shit you just didn't see back in the day about kids in Hollywood. So I'm going to look forward for that. March 12th on, on Hulu. Uh, we said 18th Justice League. Uh, what else is out right now on Disney? All five seasons of The Muppet Show is on Disney+. Plus. All of Futurama, including the movies, are all on Disney+. Plus. Uh, March March 19th, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and June 11th for Loki, continuing the Marvel uh, TV universe going on here. That's about it. So we should get out of here. Let's do the plugs. Giddles, what do you have? Hold on one second. Yeah. Uh, there was somebody in the chat who asked me to tell a very quick story, and I'm going to tell this in. I'm going to try and tell this in under a minute. I'm going to okay. see how fast I can tell this story. Okay. Uh, so the Moyle story is uh, I had mentioned uh, a rabbi called Snip Snipperson earlier, but basically when you go and this is like going way back to the beginning of the show. Hold on. Here's uh, what we're going to do. I got to pee real quick. You tell the story. I'll be right back. I'll tell the story. You're going to miss it, and everyone in the chat's going to be like, "Oh, Eric, you missed the story." Oh well. All right. You go ahead. Okay, so here's the story quick. I'm going to try and tell this as fast and concise as I can. So my cousin had a kid, and uh, in Jewish tradition, they have to have a bris, and bris is a you know, like a ritual circumcision. So we went to uh, the location where this was going to happen in New Jersey. This was for my cousin, and uh, my dad, being one of the uh, older you know males in the family, had to uh, witness the ceremony because that's what you have to do in the in the culture uh the issue is that my dad for being a hunter and a fisherman cannot like he can he can like clean a fish clean a deer gut all that like no problem if he sees like one drop of human blood like he's he's out he's out for the count like he can like i said covered in blood gutting a deer like cut his finger he's in the hospital so we're at this bris and i'm sure you could tell where this is going but uh circumcision happened dad watches it turns white as a ghost and just fucking collapses in the middle of this hotel and we had to rush him to the hospital and he was there for like overnight while they were checking on him and we're like no he's totally fine he just can't stand the sight of human blood and he just kind of freaked out and that was the story that was it and now eric's not back and i feel stupid so now it's now it's time for the giddle show uh I think I froze, didn't I? But yeah, that's that story. Uh, don't go to don't go to one of those things if you can't look at uh, human blood. That's what I'm gonna say. Uh, hope everyone's doing good out there. I'm gonna do my plugs now. Uh, this Sunday, number of the feast. Uh, uh, it's a cooking show that I do on Twitch, Twitch.tv/slash/gittlebase. I am going to uh, attempt to uh, cure a corned beef that I'm going to cook on next week's show for St. Patty's Day. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, brine this corned beef. And then next week, boom, 
we're going to make fresh corned beef. See, you missed it, Eric. No, I heard it. Your dad passed out from seeing blood at the store, at the Royals thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I heard all of it. How did you hear all of it? I'm Are good you like watching that. on Twitch? Were you were you shit twitching? Were you watching and pooping? What happened? <laughs> shit twitching? That's yeah, hilarious. That's what I call it. That's no, I ran to pay and I had the speakers up so I could hear it. All right, <laughs> good story. Let's uh, let's get the plug so we can get out of here. I just made my plugs. Oh, you did? All right, that part I yeah, missed because I was putting my phone. the speaker wasn't loud enough. You got the rest of the story. You missed the plugs. All right, well. Then I heard the important part. Then the plugs weren't important. Uh, so switching. <laughs> yes, it's called switching. That's hilarious. You got to take a shit, and you need to catch up on video games. You take a schwit. Nah, I. Also I ran. sounds like some beverage you'd have at a bris. Yeah. Have a schwitzer. Schwippies. 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 Schwippies um, is the better brand. Yeah. So there's all that. Uh, for me, it's E Rock Radio across the board on social media, but more importantly, the show. It's Eric Nagel across the board on social media. Follow all of those things. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can, uh, if you're watching live, that's one thing. But uh, for you listening on the radio, if you want to see the video versions of the radio show, go to the youtube.com slash it's Eric Nagel. Subscribe there. You can see all the radio shows, past and present. There's nothing from the future because we're just not that talented to have all of that stuff. And if you want to be part of the future, what is that? Oh, you're Mexican uh, candy. I saw- G- Gabby was in the chat. Gabby, you sent me this candy. I still have a bunch of the tamarind sours left because they're so sour and uh, there's only so much tamarind I can eat. But thank you so much. I ate a lot of the Dolce de Leche candies. Hi, Gabby. Yes, thank you for the Mexican candies. We do appreciate it. Um, yeah. If you want to be part of future shows, you give us a call. 651 Smithers, 651 764 8437. And with that being said, we got to get out of here. So until the next time, everybody, be excellent to each other. And have a wonderful time. And we'll be seeing you. It's Eric Nagel. I got a Reese Witherspoon movie I was thinking we could watch. Well, I do love my Reese. All right, but it's legally blonde or I'm out. It's Sweet Home Alabama. This day sucks. Alas, we're out of time. Follow It's Eric Nagel on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For ways to listen to the show, go to itsericnagel.com. And remember to tell two friends so they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And they can tell two friends. And those two friends can tell two friends. Well, you get the idea. Keep it real, homies.